I'm just gonna move it up a little higher so I can see. So just make sure it might change. I'll say no. Power mic. So ladies and gentlemen, just give us a couple of seconds. We are excited to provide a hybrid option here for the first time ever. Um, and I just want to make sure that we are plugged in so that way we do not lose battery life. This is a historic moment in Cerebral right now. Okay. All right. So we're good. I think we're fabulous. Please rise for uh, first a short prayer and then a salute to our flag. Almighty God, grant us the wisdom to make those decisions that are in the best interest of all of our residents. May the Heavenly Father of us all bless those who have given the ultimate sacrifice and service to our nation, and may he watch over and protect our servicemen and women now guarding the gates of freedom. Salute to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. You may have a seat. At this point, I will ask for a statement of publication by our clerk, Jess. Take notice that this regular meeting of the mayor and council being held on this 28th day of February 2022 has been advertised and posted in accordance with Open Public Meetings Act. Chapter 231, Public Law 1975. Thank you. Roll call, please. Council Persons Conti. Here. June 4. Here. Mar. Here. Novak. Here. Anoha. Here. Roberts. Here. At this time, I'll ask for Council President for the approval of prior minutes of the Mayor and Council. Yes, I'd like to make a motion to approve the prior minutes. Is there a second? Second. Roll call, please. Council Persons Mar. Yes. Conti. Yes. June 4. Yes. Novak. Yes. Anoha. Yes. Roberts. Yes. Thank you very much. At this time, we do have proclamations and presentations, but are we going to delay those until um, everybody gets here? Until Wonderful. That's fine. Just want to let the public know. So we will just delay our proclamations and presentations for a little bit later in the meeting, so that way we can have all attendees present. At this point, we're going to move down to our next meet. Uh, no need, for no need for executive session at this time. And that brings us now to old business. Um, so we have a resolution received from the planning board. Uh, Jessica? Resolution received from the several planning board following a meeting on February 17, 2022, recommending the club pier property be placed into a non-condemnation area in need of redevelopment. No, Mike will have an ordinance. Ordinance will be prepared for the next meeting for so that way we can put this on for introduction. Thank you very much. We're going to move on then to the public hearing on the following ordinances. Jessica? Ordinance number 02-22, an ordinance amending and supplementing Chapter 7 of the Revised General Ordinances of the Borough of Cerebral to amend Section 7-16.7, Schedule F, Permit Only Parking Streets. At this time, I'll open to the public for any and all comments regarding the ordinance number 02-22. Anyone from the public wish to speak, either online or in person? If you are online, you press star nine. Okay, I see Jim Robinson's hand is up. Jim, you're going to come into the public portion in just a second. Please state your name and address. Go ahead, Jim. Thank you, Mayor. Jim Robinson, 11 Burrell Square. First of all, thank you for the hybrid meetings. 
Is it appropriate to ask a question now about the Club Pure? Um, I believe that uh, we're going to have to wait until the next meeting for that. The resolution was prepared, but I'll double check with our attorney right now. Dan? Okay. Um, I'm sorry, uh, Mike, not Dan. We opened the public portion on this ordinance. Yeah, no, Jim, if you would, uh, this is Michael, Jim, if you would just bring this up in the uh, public portion here after our consent agenda, that would be helpful. Okay, very good, thank you. Thanks, Jim. Thank you, Jim. Um, so once again, any comments or questions on ordinance number 02-22? Seeing none, I will entertain a motion from Public Safety Committee Councilwoman June 4. Thank you. I move the public hearing be closed and the consent agenda resolution be approved on roll call. Uh, the ordinance. The ordinance, uh, okay. I'm sorry. Okay, I motion to adopt it. Okay, thank you. I move the public hearing be closed. The ordinance be adopted on second and final reading and advertised according to law. Perfect. Um, is there a second? Second. Roll call, please. Council. Yes. I was talking to uh, the attorney uh, after talking to uh, Sergeant. Um, I wanted to put this out there to the mayor of health consideration uh, that the, uh, this be changed slightly to say, you know, a, an hour before and an hour after school time. Because if these residents have guests in the evening or on, on weekends, they would be subject to be ticketed. I'm sorry, I'd like to make a remark. I believe in our last meeting that was brought up. And what was said was that if there's a guest, they're supposed to notify the police department ahead of time. Yeah, but we don't want to make this hard. As it is right now, we don't have anybody to issue any permit, whether they're the residents or not. But I'm just I'm trying to make it easier on the homeowners. Their problems primarily exist during the school day. And this way, they wouldn't have to be running around trying to get guest passes for their company. Um, I understand exactly where you're coming from, and I think that that is a very logical thought. I am going to caution one change with that. The high school, especially over in that area, it's not just an hour before or an hour after. There's a lot of events that are held at the high school, um, including football games, homecomings, and so forth, that actually creates quite a bit of traffic and a parking issue not just an hour before or an hour after school. That would also create some issue, I believe, on school drive, which would then, in fact, restrict our residents from still being able to utilize that portion of their home, the front. Um, so I think that might be, while it's, I understand where it's coming from, I do think we're still gonna run into some trouble with that, um, especially, and that includes if we decide, I don't know if the Board of Education is looking to continue to do some, uh, parent-teacher conference nights or so forth. I still think that our residents are going to be impacted if we don't do something, but uh, it is up to the council. So uh, Councilwoman Novak, are you looking to, you would have to then at this point, I would think table this um, before, because at this point we're at public hearing. Is that what we would have to do, Mike? If we were to consider an amendment of any type or we can move it forward and then uh, change it later on if they're, uh, you know, after that. If the residents find that it's too restrictive on them, because I don't want anybody to have to run and try to get past for, I mean, you know me, Thanksgiving, I have 42 people at my door. Yeah. If I was on a, a resident-only street, I would have to run and get, you know, you know, uh, um, I do not get, I don't get a vote on here unless, of course, obviously, obviously if it's a tie, um, and I don't think that's the direction. I think what it might be um, in the best interest of our residents at this point is to pass the ordinance as written, and then if amendments or adjustments need to be made as a result of concerns with our residents, the same individuals that came forth to ask us to put this in place, we can then amend it later. My mask is making my voice muffled. On there. Are there complaints from our chat? Oh, uh, how about if I pull this back a little bit? Um, does that work a little? I might have been just a little bit too close to um, the mic. I will be honest. Um, am I loud? Muffled. Yeah. So I hope that people would be able to, if it's muffled beyond audibility, then I'll try and do something. But I'll be honest, I'm not comfortable removing my mask right now. I was deemed to be a close contact. 
for somebody. However, because I am vaccinated and because I am also boosted, I do not need to, um, apparently I'm not quarantine material. So I would like to keep everybody here safe. So trust me, I think you all want my mask on. <laughs> But we do still need to vote on this. So ladies and gentlemen, um, we're gonna move forward the vote unless anybody wants to call for a table on this, but it would be my recommendation to vote on this ordinance. So we have a, a motion and a second. Roll call, please. Council Persons, June 4. Yes. Conte. Yes. Mar. Yes. Novak. Yes. Noha. Yes. Roberts. Yes. Public hearing on ordinance number 03-22 an ordinance amending and supplementing chapter seven of the revised general ordinances of the borough of several to amend section 7-4.1 trucks over four tons excluded from certain streets uh, once again i'll open to the public for any and all comments regarding this ordinance only if you wish to speak you can either come to the microphone or press star nine to uh, signal if you are virtual i see nothing on virtual nor here so at this point i'll entertain a motion once again councilwoman june for I move the public hearing to be closed and the ordinance adopt on second and final reading advised according to law. Is there a second? Second. Roll call, please. Council persons, June 4. Yes. Conte. Yes. Mar. Yes. Novak. Yes. Anoha. Yes. Roberts. Yes. Ordinance number 04-22, calendar year 2022, ordinance to exceed the municipal budget appropriation limits and to establish a cap bank. At this time, I'll open to the public once again for any comments regarding this ordinance. Seeing none at this time, I will entertain a motion. Administration and Finance Committee, Councilman Novak, please. I move the public hearing be closed. The ordinance adopted on second and final reading after towards criminal law. Second. Roll call, please. Council Persons Novak. Yes. Conte. Yes. June 4. Yes. Mar. Yes. Anoha. Yes. Roberts. Yes. Bond ordinance number 05-22, bond ordinance providing for well maintenance and redevelopment in by and for the borough of Sarville, New Jersey, appropriating $650,000, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $650,000 bonds or notes of the borough for financing part of such appropriation. At this time, once again, I'll open to the public for any and all comments on this ordinance only. Seeing none, I will entertain a motion. Again, Administration and Finance, Councilman Novak, please. Move the public hearing be closed. The ordinance adopted on second and final reading and advertised according to law. Second. Roll call, please. Council Persons Novak. Yes. Conte. Yes. June 4. Yes. Mar. Yes. Anoha. Yes. Roberts. Yes. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, at this point, it is, uh, I did see one appointment to be made to the Recreation Advisory Board, and that I believe was Sherry uh, Co. Co. Do I always say that wrong? Yep. Um, so I'd like to make that appointment. Um, is there any objection from the council? Is that the application that didn't have the number of years in, as a resident? There was um, one application that just didn't have that filled in. You know what? I'm just flipping through my page right um, now. I know that she. The recreation board? Yes, the recreation board. I believe that was the only one that was attached. I think I may have left it in my office actually at this point. Does anybody have that um, with them right now just to verify? Yeah, I have it right here. Okay. So. Um, I know that Sherry's been here. I don't know how many years, how long she has. I know that she is currently a volunteer in uh, soccer, also on track and field, correct? Mm -hmm. um, just, I noticed that it was a, a missing piece of info. So if you could just get that. Yeah. yeah um, has she volunteered? I think she's volunteered for other things. She was on the board of adjustments. She was on the board of adjustments also. So um, could you just, yeah, she was on the board of adjustments as well. So at this point, um, I'll stick with that appointment. Um, and Jessica, would you be able to turn around and just verify what the number of years are and check with her on that? Um, any objection then to the uh, motion? Because she did serve on the planning on the uh, board of adjustments um, for at least one term. Is there a motion? I motion it. Um, is there a second? Second. Roll call, please. Council persons, June 4. Yes. Conte. Was the, the motion is to accept, Sherry? Yeah, to accept her. Yeah. Yes. Accept the appointment. Mar? Yes. Thanks. Novak? Yes. Noha? Yes. Roberts? Yes. Okay. And I don't have my uh, my application packet. I usually, I actually have it in my office. So were there any others? Yes. Um, Mayor, uh, Council President, I will we'll pass that to you. Um, you can turn around and... Um, just make those appointments for me. I had no objections with any of the appointments that were list. Uh, let me double check. Let me see. I didn't. Yeah, one was filled already. 
alternate. The second liaison to the Board of Education. Uh, that was Jeff Smith, correct? Yes. Um, so I would like to make that appointment as well. Um, I would need a motion and a, a second. to accept Jeff Smith for the liaison to Board of Education. Wonderful. Now, I know that in past we always had a, a male and a female, but I don't believe that that's necessary at this point. It doesn't specify. It doesn't specify. So I'm very happy to have the, both of those positions filled. There's been years where we haven't. So, um, and I know that he will do a great job with Robert as well. So I have a motion and a second. Roll call, please. That was Michelle. Council Persons Roberts. Yes. Conte. Yes. June 4. Yes. Mar. Yes. Novak. Yes. Anoha. Yes. Uh, so thank you both Justin, uh, Jeff and Robert for um, stepping up and wanting to serve in that capacity. We are now moving on to new business, which is the introduction of additional ordinances. Jessica. Ordinance number 07-22, an ordinance supplementing and amending ordinance number 435-19, fixing the salaries of certain borough officials, officers, and employees for the year 2022. Okay, since this is for introduction, I will pass that over to Administration and Finance. Councilman Novak, please. Move the ordinance be approved on first reading, advertised according to law, and the public hearing to be held on March 14th, prevailing time. There's a second. second. Roll call, please. Persons Novak. Yes. Monty. Yes. June 4. Yes. Mar. Yes. Anoha. Yes. Roberts. Yes. Introduction of ordinance number 08-22 and ordinance supplementing and amending ordinance number 436-19 fixing the salaries of certain borough officials, officers, and employees for the year 2022. Uh, administration and Finance once again. Councilman Novak, please. Move the ordinance be approved on my on yeah. My move the ordinance be approved on first reading advertised according to law for a public hearing to be held on 314 prevailing time. Second. Roll call, please. Council Persons Novak. Yes. Conti. Yes. June 4. Yes. Mar. Yes. Anoha. Yes. Roberts. Yes. Ordinance number 09-22, an ordinance uh, supplementing and amending ordinance number 437-19, fixing the salaries of certain borough officials, officers, and employees for the year 2022. And once again, Councilman Novak, please. I move the ordinance be approved on first reading, advertised according to law for a public hearing to be held on March 14th, prevailing time. Second. Roll call, please. Council Persons Novak. Yes. Conti. Yes. June 4. Yes. Mar. Yes. Noha. Yes. Roberts. Yes. Ordinance number 10 22, an ordinance amending Chapter 17, Parks and Recreational Areas of the Revised General Ordinances of the Borough of Cerebral. Uh, once again, oh, actually, no, this is a change. Sponsor, Councilwoman Mar, please. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. I move the ordinance be approved on first reading, advertised according to law, and a public hearing to be held on March 14th. <coughs> Second. Roll call, please. Council Persons Mar. Yes. Conti. Yes. June 4. Yes. Novak. Yes. Anoha. Yes. Roberts. Yes. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, at this point, we're going to move to consent agenda resolutions. If there's anyone from the public that had any questions or comments on consent agenda resolution items, you may step forward or raise your hand virtually. These are for consent agenda resolution questions only. Being none, I will entertain a motion to accept consent agenda re resolutions and close the oh, public sorry. portion. I'd like to make a motion to accept the consent agenda resolutions. And close the public portion. And close the public portion. Second. Roll call, please. Council Persons Mar. Yes. Conte. Yes. June 4. I vote yes on everything except for 2022-54 through 2022-69. Uh, Council Person Novak. Yes. Anoha. Yes. Roberts. Yes. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, at this time. Thank you, Borough Attorney. Um, public portion. So if you have any and all comments relating for the good of the cause or questions for the borough, for the council or mayor, you may raise your hand or step forth. I see um, hand, I'm gonna go here. Um, to in person, Jeff, is that you? Yep. Hi, Jeff. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> You're very welcome. Yeah, thank you to the council for that appointment. I appreciate and hope to do you proud. Very good. Um, Name was, and address for the record. Uh, Jeff Smith, 185 Grove Street in the Morgan section. Yes, go so ahead. So, wondering if there's any update 
with the proposed March 7th meeting with the Board of Education? Um, well, I'll tell you right now. I mean, I have not heard anything, but I would like to, I intend on calling a special meeting on March 7th in order to specifically address issues regarding the bus transportation depot. And will that be open to the public as Absolutely, it has to be. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you. You're very welcome, Jeff. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Uh, Robert Duffy, 111 Duffy, Merritt sorry. Avenue. Hi, Duffy, Mr. Uh, Duffy. I want to take uh, apologize to Councilwoman Marr for acting the way I did last meeting towards you. I was wrong. You voted no. And uh, everybody else voted yes. And I would think you would be screaming from the rafters over that. But a simple reason is when a traffic survey does one day survey, it shouldn't pass, period. So I just want good government here. Bad government is all down the tubes. You can't come out of that hole. So I apologize. I appreciate it. I appreciate yeah. that, Mr. Duffy. I also want you to note one of the ordinances passed today protects our neighborhoods or neighboring neighborhoods from trucks over a certain weight limit to also you know it, further it, explain my vote of no yeah it's it's just that if you let this the professionals get away with what they did there's more coming <clears throat> and then you can't stop it be hard be sharp and tell them no. Use their money to do your own survey. That's all you have to do. And then what happens is you're not going to get the garbage coming. The good people are going to come. But I, I apologize to Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I have Thanks, one Mr. other Duffy. thing. Go yeah. ahead, Mr. Duffy. Uh, I would like to know who has the authority to eliminate a management position in the, in the county. I mean, in, in the town. Um, the borough council, quite frankly. The, yes. All of Yes. So when we when we didn't replace Mr. Bailey, you all voted for that? That was a council decision. Okay. I don't remember what the exact vote was, but I do think it was unanimous, wasn't it? I believe it was. I can have, uh, Last year. I can have the clerk double check that, but I don't believe there was any objection with that, Mr. Duffy. And that okay. was a, I think the vote was to appoint Two men as superintendents, not two superintendents. Yeah, but, uh, superintendents. but I think everybody on the council knew. They're what not, you're using the wrong language. And they're not supervisors; they're managers. Well, I'm just under saying, civil they're service. Managers. I think it's yeah. We're tied to um, civil service because that's the type of um, so, so. Under the civil service rules. There are certain titles that we have to use. You, you know that, I'm sure. Right, but you go yeah. from that point to management, you're not under the super, you know, uh, service. Uh, you Believe know. it or not, they, um, yeah, go the ahead, Mayor. The director of public works in a town this size is. It's considered management. But I, I, and I'm going to be honest, I don't think what we voted on actually eliminated that title, just that we were promoting. I believe that Mary's accurate, and I don't know if Mike remembers um, yeah, going back that you far. Didn't, you didn't well, I searched, and I can't find anything about that, okay? The other thing is that you, you did two men, and only one has a certificate. The other man didn't. Still doesn't. So. Um, Mary, do you want to um, well, address that? George took the classes and passed the test. Bill took the classes. He, uh, he couldn't take the test back when he finished the classes because of COVID. They weren't having the test. Mm -hmm. But all he has to do is take the test. Yeah. He's but I will. But I am going to caution the council, though, with any further discussion because we are starting to tread into personnel right now, which, um, legally speaking, we actually can't have that conversation unless we rice notice and they are, um, and they allow for us to have public discussion about them. 
but at least in reference to your questions regarding the ordinance and the move to the superintendents, that was definitely okay, a decision. Okay, well, I didn't know. That's what I was asking. No, I appreciate uh, that question, uh, Mr. You know, Duffy. And, I have no problem with and that. And just to let you know, George's certificate expired the 31st of last year. So just to let you know. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Duffy. You. I appreciate that. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I do have a caller from uh, our hybrid uh, section here, and that's Mr. Robinson. You're in the public once again. Name and address. Thank you, Mayor Jim Robinson, 11 Burrell Square in Farland. I'd like to ask a, a, a question about the Club Pure being put in the redevelopment zone. That's the nightclub on Route 35 in Morgan. I, I used to know these things a lot better, but from memory, I think the criterion for being put in a redevelopment zone is something has to be um, substandard or unsafe or unsanitary or dilapidated or abandoned, not used. I mean, we, <laughs> Mayor, you know, we hold political events there uh, all the time. It was one just last year. It's not abandoned. I certainly hope it's not unsanitary. <laughs> um, it's not substandard. The, the other criterion is that it can be government owned by a government entity or it can be owned by multiple owners. So it's hard to get agreement on, on what you want to do or it's been vacant for years or it's uh, let's see, remote, if it's remote and there's not access to it. Anybody's driven down Route 35 on a Friday or Saturday, there are lines of cars. Um, looking to get in there so it certainly isn't uh it's not that there's no access to it so uh, my question well the first question is this what criterion was used to determine that this qualifies as an area in need of redevelopment uh thank you for that jim um i have to be honest with you i used to know a little bit um more about the redevelopment criteria when i served on sarah uh, but i do believe that the report that was filed did note that there were two areas um, in which two subsections, letters D and H, but I am going to refer over to Jay Cornell to actually speak on behalf of that to see if he can give a little more clarity on your question. Yes, Mayor, the planning board's planner, Mr. Fowler, prepared a very detailed report. He went through the criteria to determine whether a property meets the uh, uh, designation to be put a, as an area in need of redevelopment. There's eight criteria that the law cites. Uh, Mr. Fowler's report indicated that two of the criteria were met. Only one criteria being met is, is really necessary for it to be considered. The two criteria had to do with the condition of the property itself. Uh, not the building, Mr. Robinson. Uh, it's not the Club Pure building, but there are dilapidated buildings on that property. It's not just a Club Pure property. There are buildings adjacent to it on the same lot that he felt were in poor condition as well as the parking lot, there are drainage problems, there are other issues. That was one criteria, and the second had to do with uh, smart growth planning, which is criteria H. He felt that it was consistent with that, and uh, that was the other uh, uh, item that he cited, saying by meeting those two criteria, uh, he felt it did qualify, and the planning board did go through and uh, adopted a resolution agreeing with the conclusion of his report. Thank you very and, much for that, Jay. Jim, so and, that, go ahead. Was that was that the planner from Higher Gruel? Uh, one second, Jim, because Councilman Novak did have a question um, to clarify what Jay had said. Go ahead, Councilman Novak. S section D and okay. Section H. The H. They're That's the two right. criteria. Thank you. Okay. Um, so I'm sorry, Jim. Go ahead again. Uh, okay. It, w was that a planner from Higher Gruel? Um, Fowler is not a part of Higher Gruel. I He's believe. not. He's Mr. Not Fowler is his own firm, and he is the planning board planner. He's, he, he is our planning board planner, but he's not a portion. I didn't think he's not he associated was. with higher rule. Correct. Correct. Okay. All right. And, and, you know, so that everybody knows my concern about this, when things are put in a redevelopment zone, the town can designate it for a specific use. And, and this is the big one. It can be given a pilot uh, under the redevelopment law. Sarah could actually issue bonds to fund the redevelopment. I don't think that would happen, but it can be put into a pilot and i do have a concern about that we recently saw a project where i think the redevelopment process raised some questions in fact um mr duffy was talking about one of them earlier and i know that others share my interest and concern 
And so I'm going to start to look at these more carefully. Others should look at these things more carefully to make sure that when things are put in an area of redevelopment and pilots are granted, it be for good land use reasons and that there be no other contributing factors. Do you, does anybody know what anticipated use there is for this property? Does anyone from the redevelopment agency at this time know? Mayor Mitchell, I can respond there. Yes, Mr. Cornell. This study is the first step in the process. This just indicates that the property meets the criteria. The next step in the process is actually have a redevelopment plan prepared. Typically, the council adopts a resolution confirming the action taken by the planning board and authorizes the preparation of a redevelopment plan. That redevelopment plan would dictate what could be built on that property. That hasn't happened yet. That would be the next step in the process. Okay. And do you know, Mr. Cornell, if there has been any discussion whatsoever about a pilot on this property? Mr. Robinson, I do not know that. The redevelopment agency recommended to the council, I think it was October of last year, that this property be studied. The council did take action and refer to the planning board, but I don't know if Sarah discussed any specific uses. Okay. And my concern about this is this. I attended, I guess I didn't attend the Sarah meeting. I looked at a tape of it when Arsenal went before Sarah and they made their presentation and Mr. Samuel raised the issue of the pilot and even Chairman Daddio didn't know anything about a pilot for that and a pilot had been discussed for the warehouses. And I just, I have a concern here when we throw around these pilots, you know, I have a concern about the road and the connector road through Hercules property there. So I'm going to be looking into this a little bit more carefully. I done some preliminary research. I understand Mr. Samuel is opposed to that road and would prefer in section three, another road that might go out to Hartle Drive. And I understand that a pilot might now be being talked about in reference to the warehouse. So I think that's going to be considered then that roadway through the Hercules property ought to be on the table and it ought to be on the table in section one, not in section two or section three, because I honestly believe this, if section one is built and those trucks are on Washington Road and Bordentown Avenue and Cheesequake Road, they're not going to be a section two. They're not going to be a section three because the folks wouldn't stand for it. So if we are talking about a pilot for the Arsenal Trade Center, I think that we have to revisit that road, find out what the objections to it are and go down that path. And I will be monitoring this to see if a pilot is offered to Club Pure. I just want to make sure that everything is pure about this whole process. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Robinson. Just for the record, I know that the road's been discussed for quite a bit of time. I will say that I am, I've had conversations with many people and I'm putting it out there publicly when it comes to the redevelopment of that warehouse area off of Cheesequake Road. I do believe that that road is necessary. It's needed. And the timing of it is going to be extremely important. And I do agree that to wait until a possible phase three, even a phase two, is not going to solve the problems that I believe we are going to see in that section of town. I concur with Mr. Robinson that we need to have that road built sooner rather than later. And I'd like to see that put in place um, with that first phase of redevelopment. I do think it's going to be an issue. With that being said, anybody else from the public? I, I am excited because it looks like our young athletes are here. Our young athletes are here for their moment. I'm very proud and very excited to bring you guys up shortly. Um, but right now we're going to go to um, our next speaker. So name and address, please. Hi, my name is Christine Kirkman. I live at 175 Lincoln Street. Mm -hmm. um, here representing history. Um, I, we need to preserve the ball field for our veteran that um, was killed in action. 
Um, I attended the Sierra meeting, and they gave me this map that <laughs> I can barely see. But um, they had said that the ball field's still on the table. That it's still on the table. And not from us, not from me, not from anybody it, here. I know that's what I've heard. I was not at the redevelopment agency meeting. Um, so when you say that it's on the table, no. I don't believe that it's on the table. It's not on the table from us. We don't have that call. Um, Jay, would you be able to clarify slightly or, or to the best of your ability? I'm not sure why Sarah is discussing the, the Slover School in the ball field. That, that's a Board of Education and Mayor and Council issue. So I'm, I'm not sure why Sarah would be discussing um, that. When I was at the meeting, I spoke to someone who sent me the map. So they were part of yeah. Sierra. Jay, it, it wasn't discussed. It was brought up from the public. Okay. And, um, and I think Dave then shared uh, the, play, the locations. So I believe that's what happened. Uh, he shared the location. The map that you're looking at was prepared by our office. It's the, it does not include the Slover School property as a, a, an alternate site. I'm just telling you what, what they said. I'm not, you know. Um, so they said there were two other properties that are possibilities. Um, do you have any objections to those properties? I don't know what you're referencing, to be honest with you. The redevelopment agency, um, that's a separate entity from here. You have two council people, though, that do serve on the redevelopment agency. It's Councilman Novak and Councilman Conti, and you also have the engineer, Jay Cornell. Um, I will tell you right now, I have, and, and the council, we have absolutely no decision-making ability on where the Board of Education is going to put that. I was very excited and very happy when this council voted to authorize our engineer, who is the Board of Education's engineer also, to give them a map of any borough properties. I also asked for county properties. Um, and what other properties did we include in that? Borough-owned properties, county properties, Board of, Sarah. Board of Education and Sarah, the Cerebral Economic Redevelopment Agency properties, to go on to the map. I said, give the Board of Education all of it. Mm -hmm. And then the, the Board of Education received those maps. And then the Board of Education, I believe, and maybe Councilman Moore, you can uh, clarify because I think you have discussions with Dr. Labby. It was up to them to look at those sites and have whatever conversations they were going to have about them. That is the point that we have been involved in at this, from a council perspective, mayor and council perspective, that's what was recommend. That was what was requested. I and I think you came a couple of minutes later. I'm telling everybody right now. I'm calling a special meeting for March 7th, as the mayor, to discuss the bus okay. depot. To whatever degree we can talk about it as a borough. Again, we're very limited in what jurisdiction we have. We really have no jurisdiction at all. But doesn't Sierra own some of that property that they want to use? They, they do. I don't know if any of that property is what's being discussed. I was not at that redevelopment uh, meeting because I don't serve on the redevelopment agency. No, I don't think, so just to clarify, Mayor, I don't think uh, the two properties that are in question, one we realize is protected by open space. So it's not, you know, it's not a, a black and white matter. So next Monday will be the time where we discuss the availability of those properties. Well, I don't know, hold on a second. I'm gonna defer over to our redevelopment agency council people um, to comment on what transpired at the redevelopment agency. Um, Cause you were there, mm -hmm. I'm assuming, cause you said that you had spoken to somebody and these, there are three people in this room that can speak about the redevelopment agency. And, J and Jay is included in that third person. Again, like the mayor said, we do not say or to say is it off the table that wasn't up to Sarah to make that decision I can honestly say all of the properties that CME provided all of them were on the table as far as I'm concerned um, but the Board of Education we're trying to get a meeting together the mayor said we're going to have a meeting on our behalf whether or not the Board of Ed I do understand that tomorrow night that they will be voting on whether or not they're going to come 
if it's going to be the whole board, if it's going to be some of the board members or what, but for March 7th. We're going to have a meeting anyway. Mm -hmm. But we're hoping that they will come. And that is open to the public. I know that uh, Jeff did come up and ask if that, that's open to the public. That's, that's by law. Okay. Like, I'm not holding a, th this is a conversation to be had with the residents. We are open, we are transparent. We can only tell you where we are and what we can say and what we have jurisdiction over. Um, I will be very interested and, and I'm hopeful that the Board of Education wants to have that conversation as well. So I'm hoping that they're going to attend, whether they come as a, a whole body or whether they come in part as a committee. I don't know, we'll see. But I'm, I'm hopeful that they want to turn around and resolve this. Mm -hmm. We are collectively here as an entire body for what we can do. Um, what, what we are hearing is that they will name the bus depot after um, no. Wayne Grant. Yeah, I, I don't know what they're saying. I, I'm that, really I mean, trying to hold back on rumors and so forth. I made it very clear how I feel. Those ball fields need to stay. Wayne's memory needs to stay as a visual, not just something that we talk about. Mm -hmm. Wayne's family, they, it's, and, and graciously, it's not, it's not even just about his name, it's about our kids, it's about that area. It's so much bigger than, than, than even what we're able to talk about here. I am opposed to it and I have been 100 since the moment I found out. Yeah. I want to have you see as residents what's really being discussed. It's paining me and it's angering me that residents are having to go between two meetings and hearing between rumor mills and not. No rumors. Here's the microphone. There's no reason to hide. The residents deserve to know. You're going to know eventually what they decide because either something's going to be built or it's not. So just talk and get it out. This is what I know so far. The maps were given over. I believe the Board of Education is looking at the sites that were given over to them. What they are saying and what their discussions have been so far, I will not speak on that. I don't know. Just like I would hope that they're not going to speak on our mayor and council's behalf. That's why I wanted to have a meeting with all parties in the room. Thank you for, for having, you. Thank you for having the meeting. May I, may I? And um, I just want to say that that we have been attending all the meetings, I and know. it's just it's not so much rumor; it's things that we are literally being told. And yeah. you know, they're just, everybody's bouncing it on someone else, and it's just yeah. I know I know you're wholeheartedly into this. That's why I try, That's why I believed, and I said at the last meeting. The only way to stop the ping pong ball from bouncing off of walls is to get everybody into a room mm -hmm. and get everybody to turn around and just say where they are in each individual's responsible compartment of government. Just say where you are. Stop making our residents jump from place to place to place. It shouldn't be that hard. So that's why I turned around and said, we're having a meeting. Thanks. I'm having this meeting. Everybody that is legally allowed to attend under the Sunshine Law because an advertised meeting, come at it. That's as much as I can do. I wish I had more power in order to get you the answers. I'm hoping we're in the right direction, but who knows? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Say of course. I, this is strictly from Councilwoman Novak. This is uh, my own personal opinion. Um, none of the properties that were presented are off the table. We haven't even gotten that far. What I would personally like to see happen is some sort of land swap so that the town officially takes possession of those fields and perhaps the building too. And so this can never happen again. I'd like to see that building used for recreation building that we, this town solely needs. And it would be an appropriate place. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of options here, a lot of opportunities once we get everybody in the room. So. Ms. Grant, come on up. Oh, I'm so sorry. Did it, no, you're okay. I'm, thank you. Sorry, buddy. Uh, Butchie's little brother, Charlie Grant, South Pine <laughs> Avenue, Morgan. Yes. Okay, to answer the one question, Dr. I can't pronounce his last name. Labby. 
He, he personally told me, and at the first meeting that the, the Morgan people went to at the Board of Ed, he did state that when they put the uh, bus depot there, he's going to leave the sign that's there, and he's going to put a little plaque on the building that they're going to be on. And as I told him, that's not acceptable. As I spoke to my family, and I talked to a lot of Vietnam veterans from my brother's organization, they support me 100% that that would be 100% disrespectful as much as it was when they were getting off the plane and people were spitting on them back in the 60s and 70s. Okay, so you know how I feel about my brother and his honor. It's, and as you said earlier, it's like we said, it's about the kids. When we were young kids growing up, that was actually our what do you call it? Our sandlot. Today, it's these, the kids that we have today, that's their field of dreams. We can't let that go. Can you see our kids in Morgan riding down Bordentown Avenue on bicycles like yeah. we did back in the 60s and 70s? That, that can't happen. It's very unsafe. As I told them also, the Babe Ruth field is very unsafe as it's surrounded by woods. I do work with kids, abused kids, and it's very unsafe. It is very unsafe. Not only that, you're going to have, as you talk about all these trucks going down Cheesequake, can you imagine 50, 60 buses going up and down through Morgan, all the exhaust? Then they got to come over to the other side of Cerville to refuel. I understand you are in a position, but I do hope that you can 100% put everything out there to put an end to this. That's all I can really say. Thank you so much. And I appreciate Absolutely. your whole time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Come on up. <laughs> um, I'm Bill Policastro. I'm the president of uh, several men's leagues, softball. Um, I know I've been going back and forth with uh, Brian on this um, the price, but we're at a standstill with our league. And, and the problem that we have is these guys are going to start going to other leagues, and we're not going to have a league if, if this goes any longer. So I was just, you know, hoping you guys could come up with a resolution. Uh, I think. You know, we're on to something, we're working on this, and hopefully we could get it done soon so I could give these guys an answer. Um, Who are you working I, with? You're working with Brian. Um, yes, I've been. And Dan. Yes, speaking with Brian and Dan. And Michelle. Yeah. Okay, so now you, you mentioned that you're getting close to a resolution. That, yeah. Um, that's it, good. I, I'd, I'd name uh, a price that we could pay that would keep us still alive. Okay. Um, and it's still higher than the other towns. I did a lot of research on it. And, um, and another thing, in, in that price, I mean, these fields, you, you, you guys have kids that play on these fields. You, you know the shape of them. So, um, and that's the whole purpose. We have to reinvest back uh, into our fields. Uh, and I no, promise I, you, you're going to see it. Okay. That, that was definitely one of my top questions. Because, yeah. you know, I have guys complaining all the time, and especially now that the price is going to go up. That's definitely yeah, so it. just for the record, I'm certain there's a lot of people within the public right now that probably have no idea. I know the guys do. So, um, Michelle, do you want to at least uh, give a little bit of a backstory? I don't like when people chime into a meeting, especially now that we're finally hybrid. Um, I'm glad that you guys are all working together and you're talking. Thank you very much, yeah, Bill. I don't want to take up all your time. No, that's okay. But I was hoping that it would be tonight, but I guess it'll be next meeting. What's yeah, that? If I, if I, Go ahead. If I might... Uh, Hi, Bill. Good evening. How are you? So um, the men's softball has offered, uh, and I'll just read uh, the email, that uh, you're agreeing to give $150 per team to the city for the use of fields, um, and that brings the team fees uh, to $500 per season. Is, is that correct? Yes. So uh, all I have to do is just uh, amend the, um, the ordinance here to dash dash 15 dash five to include that and that'll be on at the next council meeting and that money is going to be utilized in order to do upkeep and maintenance and everything right, for the, for the field so, so i can move fields. on yes um, yeah that, yeah well now so that's what's going to have to come to the council first so okay. it's a two it's a two All meeting right, so process sure that I'll speak but, with, but yeah, bill yeah. let me let me because i know you have a season to get it to get on with so i think it'd be prudent uh with that proposal that you've very generously given and that Michelle Moore has worked with you on also is if you get a straw poll from the council right now I think that would give you confidence 
to move forward. So this is the administrative part comes after, but that straw poll will give you the confidence to move forward. Is that, is that okay with you? I know the importance okay. of how hard it is to get a team and a league up and running. So I absolutely understand where you guys are at because the weather, I know we get four seasons in a month, but it's softball season and baseball season time. Um, and yeah, you, you have a large group. So I think that it is something that as a council we need to do. So at this- 50 years, I'd hate to lose this league. Yeah, absolutely yeah, not. Absolutely. Listen, it keeps the guys off the streets. Yeah. No, I'm being silly. <laughs> and, and, and even the businesses, they're making out on this. You know, there's a lot of sponsors involved. So. We got to look out for you. Same you know, we want our... okay. it keeps you healthy. And, and that's what we need to do. And I think it's a really great thing because now you're actually um, helping the youth, too. Um, because one of the biggest things that we have, like the youth organizations, that's all volunteer that turn around and maintenance and take care of the fields and stuff. Um, you, you guys are a little different because you guys are your own volunteers and you work. So um, we do that. So I think this is a great way for you guys to actually kind of help the young people come up. They'll be playing in your leagues before you know it because <laughs> we stop at 16. So, and I played in a men's league too, um, actually under uh, Teddy's bar. I was like one of only two women <laughs> on that league. And listen, it, it's the great way to feel young again. And, and then and Dan, when you go home, you don't feel young after that game. <laughs> so let's do a straw poll right now um, to see if the council is uh, going to entertain this for our next meeting so the guys can get together what they need to. Jess? Council Persons Conte. Yes. June 4. Yes. Mar. Yes. Novak. Yes. Anoha. Yes. Roberts. Yes. And Bill, I'd also like to work with you in the future so that you can contribute ideas towards where that money can go I'm, and I'm improvements. Ended, so. Thank you very much. Amazing, Bill. <laughs> well done. Thank you, guys. OK. Yes. <laughs> Hello, Heather Smith, 185 Grove Street. I actually have a quick question. First of all, I want to thank you all for, for your support and for your candor. Um, I am here about the, the bus depot. Um, I had also looked at the map, and I understand that the Board of Education, you don't have to understand that, I understand the Board of Education is leaning toward two properties. Um, there are a lot of rumors passing around, which is why we keep showing up at all of these meetings, because we keep getting um, pointed back and forth. So um, these properties were identified by CME as uh, available and appropriate for a bus depot. So my specific question is actually to Councilwoman Mar. You had said that there was a specific property that's designated as open space, and therefore it wouldn't be um, good for a bus depot. So which property is that? So that's that's what next Monday's meeting is for to discuss. Oh, okay, because it's it's odd that CME would identify a property that's designated open space. So can we not know what that property I, is? I'm going to have to ask Jay um, right now. Do you know which property is being referenced as an open space? I don't know. Um, I, I do not. There was nothing. On there's the nothing map open that space restrictions. There's. There was the Morgan Fields is that space. No, 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 no. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> let's work on that. <laughs> Although there is limitations when it comes to structures with open space. I know that we ran into that where you can't put uh, open uh, closed structures. So we don't know if we want to go there yet because right, we do when have. When we were kids, we didn't have fence. Yeah, there, I know. There, if I, if I may. Um, Dan, if I may. go ahead. Um, if, for I, Ms. Smith if, I, if I may, I think we're using the word open space maybe a little loosely. Open space means think of open space like Kennedy Park, Green Acres, things like that. One of the properties that we're talking about did have a ball field that was on there that was clear. Um, it may look like open space, it might be considered, but it is owned by the borough. I think that's one of the properties you're considering. Um, right, but we're not it, talking like a designation on the deed that would limit there, there's, the ability. There's, there's, there's I okay. call it hair on a, all of these. If these pieces were that good, okay, okay, these pieces would be developed and things like that. There's hair on all of these pieces. Yeah, no, absolutely. So, so what the Board of Ed needs to do, which they should be doing their due diligence, is what exactly this prop these properties have in what, what challenges the Board of Education has. We know what some of them are through our engineer. They have to make those decisions. So that's what this meeting is all about. The next meeting is to really get everything up in the air, you know, get everything there. They have a certain budget they want to meet. 
directing to the borough to try to help them out. We're willing to help out, but we need them to come to a meeting so it can be discussed openly so all the residents can hear that. So just don't get hung up on the term open space per se, because really open space can't be developed. And I can clarify yeah, I know that. That's why it, I was was a, it was a public meeting two weeks ago where I thought Mary had mentioned that it was. So if it's not, yeah, then. So that's where that came from. Okay, great. Thank you so much. And so I think we're going to have a lot more discussions. And, and again, this is um, phase one. I'm, uh, like I said, my, uh, as a matter of fact, Jess, I'll just confirm with you. Please make sure notice goes out for the March 7th special meeting. Um, so we'll do our usual time, I think, um, 6 o'clock or 7. I mean, 7 o'clock, everybody um, from the council, 7. I think 7 works best because this is such a big issue for the residents. And I want to make sure everybody is able to get home and be able to attend. But it will also be hybrid. This is a historical day, ladies and gentlemen. This is our first hybrid meeting. Um, I would not have called a special meeting of an issue this important without the ability to have it hybrid. So that's one of the reasons why I waited until calling that meeting for March 7th. And today was our practice. So you can see it's working. It's working very well. And we are going to have that discussion. And again, I am extremely hopeful um, that at least some representatives for the Board of Education will be here because otherwise there won't be as much discussion as you need as residents to understand how you need to organize or move forward. I appreciate so, that. Thank you're you welcome. so much. Thank you all. Thank you. Hey, so I got a just a quick question. Are you saying remote for our meetings? Does that exclude all of us? No, 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 no. I mean, it's hybrid that they No, have. I know. I'm saying if one of us needed a remote option, Oh, I have no issue with that. That's another reason why I wanted the hybrid, because if you remember, um, I actually was not allowed to attend an in-person meeting as a result of a quarantining situation. And it made me very frustrated because I could not do my job as the mayor as a result of restrictions imposed uh, under uh, quarantining. And because we did not have a hybrid option, I was basically being told I can't do my job as mayor, so I do not. This is a great, a yeah. great situation okay. so, because we now can participate as council people, even if we are forced to quarantine or if we're ill and we want to keep people safe. So this is a benefit at every level. I, I would think that we have to balance that with being available in person to people in Cerebral and to be representative of residents of Cerebral being physically in Cerebral. Yeah. Because of the remote options now, um, even companies are struggling with employees saying they're from New York, for example, and then um, moving to Georgia. Well, and, you know, they have to worry about where their people are. And I think that several should be represented by several residents at all times. So if, if there, someone's going to be in an extended leave, I'm not saying the exceptions, um, but if it's going to become a habit where uh, six weeks in a row, it's remote. I think that's a little abusive. We've never had issue with that, though. Um, just so that you know, I mean, um, we've had individuals calling in from other countries as a result of job and other things. As a council, um, we don't want to restrict, and I don't know if by law we really can. We used to always have a call-in option for our council when it came to uh, times that we weren't able to be here. But that call-in option becomes limited and more difficult to deal with when you have a hybrid option. And just for the record, correct me if I'm wrong, um, I'm not talking about council people, but I think under law, um, when it comes to Open Public Meetings Act, even if you don't live in Cerebral, we still have to afford you the opportunity to speak at a public meeting. Oh, I don't, no, Mayor, I'm not speaking about any of the public. I'm speaking about... To be oh, there. us. I mean, listen... Um, I don't think anyone's abused it, and I think under No, 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 the, I'm just yeah. saying I don't want that to happen, and I think yeah. because we represent people of Cerebral, we should be physically in Cerebral as much as possible. Absolutely. So. I, I don't think anybody here so would So we should be that. present physically yeah. as um, much as we're, possible. You're thinking we're moving away and we're still going to be on the council? Oh, well, that would be illegal. I'm saying, I'm saying um, the, the potential for a snowbird. So if you lived half your time in, in Florida now because you had the opportunity to do that, 
um, you probably wouldn't be the best representative for yeah, but that there's law in reference to that when it comes to your ability to serve um, with residency but I have to I do have one more person but I would like to just say this we have wonderful young people here that also have a job tomorrow which is to go to school um, and I do see some familiar faces um, it is eight o'clock what I'm going to do is just take one more. Uh, was there one more person from the public that wished to speak? OK. Um, does anybody have objection? If we just break for one moment from the public portion for adult, from the adults in order to honor our young people so that if they choose to leave instead of be um, listening to our conversations, they can go home, do their homework, make language arts teachers and math teachers and all of those other teachers happy that they weren't going to use. We were at the council meeting till midnight and we couldn't do our homework. Um, so uh, if nobody has an, uh, uh, an objection to that, I would just like to break. Jess, do we need to do anything to um, make that? We're going to leave it open to the public. So ladies and gentlemen, Without further ado, let's m move forward with our proclamations and presentations. We're going to start with our several junior bombers and cheerleaders. Here we go. I'm going to ask that the council meet me up at the uh, front over here by the podium. And let's get cameras Dan's, ready. Hold on. Dan's trying to say something. I think Damon's gathering with people. Let me see if I can find you one. This one doesn't have an expiration. I know, I saw that. It, is it, it's always, it's good forever. <laughs> I mean, if you want mint, I can't eat chocolate right now. <laughs> what? You're whitening your teeth? Yes. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, as we start to make our way into Borough Council Chambers, look at this. It's a sea of blue. Hi, ladies. <laughs> yeah, so let's, uh, I'm going to come over here because I'm a little vertically challenged. Many of you young people are taller than me. Um, council, um, just step up so that way you're close. Yeah. And we have our coaches here also. Yes, very good. I'll let all parents come in. Get yourself in position for cameras. You excited, lady? I love that name. You know why, right? Victoria? Queen, that's my name. That's my name. You want to be mayor for a little bit? Come on. <laughs> this is the fun part. <laughs> Hello, boys. <laughs> All right, is everybody, uh, Damon, is everybody in? Yes. We have everyone? Yes, everybody's in. All, All right. right. Thank you, Damon. So, ladies, council, family, parents, friends, coaches, everybody, this is exciting because whenever we have a full council chambers like we have now, pretty close to full, to turn around and celebrate, to give presentations, uh, presentations, proclamations, this is a happy day for all of us. So thank you, ladies and our fellows over there, our boys. Thank you for giving us an opportunity to celebrate in Cerebral again. Let's get a round of applause for everybody first. start off with because we have quite a few certificates to give out I am going to ask for coaches to come up to help me out a little bit so you can let everybody know how absolutely amazing these young people are we've decided that we are going to start and I believe this is broken up by age group so we have a first place team sitting among us which is absolutely outstanding 
So we're going to start with our Cerebral Junior Bombers cheerleading team. This is for our group that has placed first in the D10 Small Level 2 AYC National Competition and in Kissimmee, Florida. So those young ladies, you are going to rise first with your coaches and you're gonna come up and you are going to face the camera and face all these wonderful people. So I'm gonna have you guys come up and take over this front portion of our council dais. Come on up ladies, let's give them a wonderful round of applause. So ladies, make your way down right over here, spread out all the way. Let's get them all. Keep on going, you can go down a little bit further. You're gonna look at that camera right over there above the exit and give a wave because you're on TV. So that's always exciting. That right there, you are on TV. And you're gonna be on YouTube because we're on YouTube also, so. <laughs> Very awesome. Uh, and TikTok. Oh, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> We won't even mention Facebook because no one knows up here what that is. That's for old people. Um, so it's easy for me to read the certificates, but I always turn this over to our coaches because you have been really the instrumental part of these young ladies' development and what got them to the level that they're at. Um, so I wanted you to speak on behalf of your team, let everybody know why you're so proud of everybody here. I just see so many familiar faces. I'm so proud of all of you. So. Who's gonna speak first? There you go. <laughs> Make sure you let everybody know who you are. Hello everyone, I'm Kelly Vyablocki, uh, head coach for the D10 team, and also one of the cheer directors for Sandwich Junior Bombers. Uh, I've actually been involved with this association now for five years, so since its inception, um, and it's been many of the same girls, um, some new faces, very thankful um, for such a great group of girls and parents, right, behind every good cheerleader, great cheerleader, are great parents. So I thank you from the bottom of my heart. My heart is very, very full, um, and it's thanks to all of you. So as many of you know, uh, we start the season in August. Um, it's practices two to three days a week. We go from away games to home games to all-star games, and they learn a competition routine. That routine is two minutes and 30 seconds, and it is pure fun and a lot of hard work. So in a short amount of time, um, like I said, we cheered all the games, supporting our football team, teams actually, um, then competing down in Trenton um, for their Jersey Shore Conference, taking home first place there. Then we went on to the Big East region, um, taking home a second place win, and going down to Kiss Me Florida, had no idea what to expect. And that golden day, we came home as national champions. So congratulations, girls. Um, couldn't be prouder. So um, as always, you have an entire council here that is super proud of you. So I know that they all wanna say a couple of words. I just can't tell you how absolutely excited I am for you. And so many of you I get to see um, either within the schools or, or this is just the beginning. Just imagine where you're going, you're already number one. So you just gotta keep that going, keep working hard. And remember that behind every very, very talented athlete is a very, very smart young lady. So keep those grades up too, because that will get you even further in life, got it? So have the fun, but keep developing the mind as well. We're gonna pass this down to Council President Marr first for a couple of comments. There you go. Thank you, Mayor. Ladies, I'm so excited for you. Uh, cheering has come such a long way. You girls are amazing athletes. I see what all of you can do on Facebook from all your moms posting it, and you girls are amazing athletes. So great job, girls. Congratulations for winning first place. That is such an accomplishment. Um, I remember being a cheerleader, but didn't make the uh, school team, made the um, CYO team, but it was so much fun and had su built such great relationships with the other girls on the cheer team. And congratulations, I'm so proud of you all. Believe it or not, I was a cheerleading coach, blah, 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 blah. And I'm gonna say how long ago. As the mayor said, this is the best part of a meeting, and I want to thank you girls for working so hard to make a nice night for us. All right. Thank you. Congratulations, girls. I'm so proud of you. 
Uh, you represented Sayreville in a wonderful fashion, and that's what we love to see. We love to see kids doing well in Sayreville. So thank you, and congratulations. Go on to bigger and better things in the years to come. I know you will. Congratulations. Honestly, ladies, congratulations again, um, national champs. You know, it's, it's a reminder, you know, moving forward that you should never accept defeat because you've proven that, that you can win, you know, and, um, you know, my, my hope and prayer for you is that you'll continuously to prove that with all the effort and hard work that you put in. Um, you know, it, it's, a, it's a reminder that it, it paid off once, so it will continue to pay off. So congratulations. I just have to control myself. Because first of all, I see young women winning. I like to yeah. see women winning. I like to see women in power, and I like to see women take over. So congratulations. Remember, you're number one. You'll always be number one in life, and girls rule. Amen. <laughs> so what I will ask of the coaches right now, I am going to hand you. I'll work with you. Um, you have actually a lot of young ladies here. And obviously, I want to make sure those names are recognized and actually pronounced correctly. <laughs> so I'm going to turn those over to you. Um, do you want somebody to hold that mic for you? And you can go one by one. Ladies, please, when you receive your certificate, make sure you turn around for that photo moment. Okay. Receive that certificate. Take your middle section over there. Let everybody take some pictures and um, then keep on coming back here. Okay. And real quick, um, again, thank you to the coaching staff. Um, volunteer job, it's pretty amazing. So I'm thankful to have this opportunity to be with the coaches. So thank you again. And you Congrats. Want to let everybody know yeah. who your volunteer coaches are because they're here. Yeah. Um, so here tonight, um, we have Coach Caitlin. <laughs> Coach, uh, Coach Solis. Uh, Coach Lori. And... Coach Tina and Coach Jess are not here this evening, but amazing coaches. Thank you very much. So, great job. Okay. All right. Mia Perez. <laughs> Samantha Callahan. <laughs> Julie Sekarak. <laughs> Kaylee Provenza. <laughs> Summer Curbello. <laughs> Siani Blakely. <laughs> Victoria Maritoli. <laughs> Savannah Crowley. <laughs> and G Gia O'Roy. And last but not least, Lynn by walking. <laughs> Excellent job, ladies. Hold those certificates up. Let everybody get that beautiful picture. Get closer, girl. And no one's allowed to leave until the last camera goes down. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Thank ladies. You Thank, you so Thank you so much. You. You're very welcome. You. We are not done. Congratulations, ladies. You guys can have a seat. And we have a whole nother stack and more to celebrate. So this is great. We're going to the left side over here, which is my left, your right. And we have, again, reason to celebrate with our young ladies. Uh, Councilwoman June Ford, are you ready? We've got another group of young ladies here. This is it. Power. Guys, I know you're back there. Don't worry. We're coming to you. <laughs> so this particular group of young ladies also giving us so much pride here in Cerebral. Thank you. Thank you for working so hard. And thank you for visiting us this evening. This is, again, the best part of a council meeting, I swear. I'm telling you, it really is. I was disappointed when they said, no, we have to wait till 8. I'm like, no. Come on, I like starting this way. So our next group, you are being honored for placing fifth in the D12 small level two AYC national competition, also in Florida. And I'm going to ask that these lovely young ladies with their coach please step up. Also face that camera so you can get on TV, YouTube, TikTok, and all those wonderful things. Come on over here ladies, make your way down. And let's get a nice big round of applause for them as well. Oh, girls, don't be scared. Feel free to come down a little more. 
There you go. Our coach, they left you a spot right over here. Come on back I'm over. Both. You're going to both do it? I'm, I'm bringing, bringing All it right. back up. Ladies, tell us a little bit also about this group of young ladies. So this is our 12U division, our 12, 12 and over or 12 Mom, and can you speak, please? Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. She's hiding behind. So ladies, move over because I know that's true. <laughs> so I'm very proud of these girls this year. They went through a lot. Uh, they had girls drop off, we had an injury, things changed week to week, and these girls really proved that they are strong young ladies to support our team and make every change that we asked of them every second of every practice. So I am beyond proud of what you ladies did this season, first at Jersey Shore, second at Big East, and then making it and placing fifth. First up, we have Milena Parsler. Sorry, we had some ladies not be able to make it tonight. I held Savannah Perez. Sarah Murphy. I have Gabby Rodriguez. <laughs> Casey Slavicek. <laughs> Jillian Slavicek. <laughs> and last but not least, Madison Maritoli. <laughs> Ladies, hold those certificates up. You can slide down just a little bit because you have cameras that are ready and everyone is so proud of you. So hold those certificates up and give a, give a nice big smile. Again, remember the rules. Nobody can sit until the last camera goes down. All right, ladies, congratulations. Excellent job, ladies. And to hear your coach speak, perseverance in life is key. And to hear everything that you overcame in order to get to this point is impressive. And it's a life lesson that is worth more than any trophy or any place you could ever win in competition because you're gonna carry that with you forever. Um, did you guys want to speak also? Yes, I know. So I don't think I did my due diligence last time. Um, I know where cheer can take you. I was a bomber cheerleader. It took me to London. It took me to Philly. It took me to Seton Hall. It took me to Sweet 16. It took me to Elite Eight. So I know where cheer can take you. And I know how hard you work. And you girls are awesome. So just keep doing you. Nicely said, nicely said. And one thing I do want to notice is cheerleaders cheer for everyone. You have, you are just proud of cheering for other people. I notice you come up here and you're very little shy. Don't be. You are winners here. You are the winners. You are the stars tonight. So remember that. And thank you for being here with us tonight. I can't imagine what it was like to learn these cheers and then have to maybe change it up a little bit. It's just the concentration that you need to get through that. It's you're really a special group, and you, I see your future being very bright. Do they make you cheer with the masks on too? <laughs> no, sometimes they do. Right, so in practice, even even uh, tougher to do. I mean, you guys are troopers, so girls rule. <laughs> I'm so happy. I'm so proud of you guys. Congratulations. You know, I, I think the council president said it already, you know, cheering is, is it's, it's already taking you far. You know, honestly, for me, cheering it only kept me in the stands. So, <laughs> so you guys are already doing your thing. So congratulations to you. With what the mayor said, that's exactly what I would say, perseverance. 
you're going to need that word in life, in everything that you go through. With all that has happened, with the people leaving the team, with learning new routines, the pandemic, perseverance. And tonight, you proved that perseverance surely works for you. And my prayer for you is that you carry it on, even in the real world. Persevere. You will surely always be a winner. And we are not done. So I do love that girl power. But we have some exceptional young men in the audience as well. So we are going to call them up collectively. Come on up. Come on up. We have three, I believe. Let's call them up by name for a second. Because as a team, I know that even though certificates and awards can sometimes come to individuals, it's the team that brings you there. And so you have three outstanding young men before you right now. Let's once again give them a round of applause. I coach. <laughs> I will read that certificate and I'm going to pass it over to you and then we'll get a, a rundown from our council yet again. So we have, we have really, th this is just, I happened to pull up that very famous name right there. Very, very good. So um, I believe we have two. Okay. So there's, our, two, different types. there's two different types. Um, so we have one individual and I'll let, I'll let coach handle this we'll announcement. Yeah, we definitely will. Let's go to the other. There you go. We're going to start here. <laughs> well, let's see. So our first, our first celebration here um, this evening, we have, where is our, there we are, Dimitri Desario. Is that correct? I did that right. Dimitri Desario. Right in the middle. Now, why are we clapping for this young man? Ladies and gentlemen, take a listen to this. He is being awarded the AYF 14U All-Star National Champion. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> did, did you see that face? Hold out the ring. Hold, Hold out, out that ring. ring. I'm going to let you hold that out. I'm going to let you see that. So I saw that. I saw that smile get very, very big, and I saw that shoulders go up, because when you hear that name and you hear that title, that is something to be proud of outstanding young man. You. But we've got a couple more to go, yes. and I'm going to let Coach speak on behalf of all these amazing, amazing athletes. So, I'm going to hold that one. I'm going to hold that one one more time. Our next outstanding athlete that we have is Abdul Teray. We are honoring this young man this evening for placing third in the AYF 12U All-Star Championship. You get to hold that one, that certificate. And again, you got lots of pictures coming, so gentlemen, you're gonna have to hold those up. Now, I've been trying to give this certificate over to Coach now three times. He's gonna, <laughs> I think he's gonna let me do it this time, right? So our next young man, Jason Bresti. <laughs> That's right, you, cl you clap for you. That's right. And once again, we have this award going to Jason for placing third in the AYF 12U All-Star Competition. <laughs> Outstanding young man, but I'm gonna turn this over to Coach so that he can tell us just a little bit more about these accomplishments and your season. As you all know me, I'm Jimmy Brasky, football director of Sarah Virginia Bombers. Not good with words or not good with speeches, but uh, this year I had the, I coached it, our 12U football team, which was Abdul and Jason, um, and Dimitri played on 14U. We, 14, our 14U team went all the way to the championship game, in which placed second within our Sh Jersey Shore Conference. Okay. Our, our 12U team, went all the way to semis uh, right before the championship and we lost. But talk about, <laughs> I'm, not good with, I'm not good with words, but uh, speaking of, there's tryouts for the All-Stars. So there was about 60, 60 plus teams in AYF Jersey Shore. Yeah. Uh, each one of these individuals probably, they went against 200 of their peers of people. They only picked uh, 34 kids per team. 
This is the first year that Jersey Shore sent the 12U football team down. Um, to Florida. To Florida. Yeah. We went down to Florida. Um, they tried out. There was a, a tryout process. Then they asked for videos on top of that to see the kids uh, perform. Again, there was 200 plus kids trying out for each level. So Dimitri had to go against 200 kids. Jason Abdul had to go against 200 kids. Um, to get selected out of, is, is, is a big accomplishment. Fast forward, we endured the coldest practice weather ever. Uh, all October, all November, practicing out there, 10 degree weather. These kids now quit. Dimitri didn't even wear an undershirt, I don't think. Uh, they, from going from school, straight to practice every day. We're driving an hour there, hour back to go to practice wherever we practice work. Fast forward to Florida. We get down to Florida, it's 85 degrees out. <laughs> Beautiful weather. They, Abdul being a starting running back on a team and Jason being a starting middle linebacker on our 12U and Dimitri being starting defensive tackle. Wow. A big accomplishment from Sarah, for Sarah. Uh, Absolutely. Couldn't be any more proud of these three boys. They just are men, I gotta say men, because they're bigger, pretty soon they're gonna be bigger than me, all of them. So. Uh, <laughs> Congratulations, boys, and good luck in high school, Dimitri. And Jason Abdul, come back next year ready to go. Fantastic. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, once again, boys, hold those certificates up, and you can't put them down until that last camera goes down. So this is a great moment here. Let parents be proud. Go ahead. <laughs> You, you still have camera on you. All right. Looks like all cameras are down, at least for picture taking. Boys, I would love to let you sit down, but I know that the council would also like to say a few words. That's just the way we roll here. And then you're allowed to leave. But more importantly, um, you know, when you're an athlete, the balance in your life is something that is often difficult to accomplish, especially being so young because they have all the responsibilities and the trials and tribulations of every young person, right? You've got friends, you've got family, you've got schoolwork, you've got all of those pressures. And on top of that, you're pushing yourself to be the best athlete you can be also, because it's what you love, but it's what you're dedicated to. And you understand what success means, but you also learn failures too, and that failures are part of success. So the life lessons, that athletes gain at such a young age, those are the things I want you to remember because they're going to get you through anything, whether it's on a field, in an office, working in the field at a job. The skills you learn on a field together with your teammates is what makes you the men you're going to be in the future. So congratulations to you. Congratulations, boys. I know what a commitment football is as an old football mom. Thankfully, not anymore. It is a big commitment, and I'm sure there's days when you do not want to go to practice five days a week, um, but you go and you get better, and <laughs> your parents, it's a commitment for them too, so thank them. And uh, you guys are all stars, and I know you guys off the field too, and I know you guys are awesome people off the field, so excellent job, guys. Hi guys, I just want to say congratulations on achieving what you've done so young in life. You already have skills that you need, leadership and teamwork. And with those, you're going to be able to take on anything. Um, it's obvious if you were able to get onto another team together, you've already learned how to be leaders yourselves and work with other teams successfully. There's nothing you can't do. Congratulations. What I know about football, you could fit on the tip of my finger here, unfortunately. <laughs> but I just want to say, I mean, before you were all stars, you were all a member of the team. And that's the most important thing, learning to work together. And then you're, because your team made you stand out because you all work together. So good luck for the rest of your lives.
boys rule. <laughs> no, I. Hey, tremendous accomplishment. I'm looking at three tough guys right here. Very proud of you guys because I know how hard football can be uh, just to get up every day and go in, in that game. So, you know, really, really proud of you guys. You made say we're very proud. Uh, and use this and, and go on and lead. Lead in the, the next stage of life, whatever that may be, whether it's, you know, 13 or 14 you or in high school. You know, just get out there and lead. Make us proud. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> Listen, guys, you know, you're still wearing your jerseys and it's March, you know, or, 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 or almost March, that is, and that, that, that's already a huge deal. You know, it's, it's a big degree of, of self-separation from your peers. And I, I think your coach said it's, it was all the hard work, the effort, you know, the motivation. And as you're preparing for the future, you know, let that, let that fuel you for more. You know, you have more goals, you have bigger goals, keep, keep on pushing for it. You know, I, I really believe you'll get there and you keep making our borough proud. Congratulations. My favorite sport, <laughs> football. I really, really love American football. Congratulations to all three of you and your entire team. And I look forward to seeing you do greater things in the future. Also drafted in the NFL too. <laughs> no pressure. So ladies and gentlemen, with that being said, we have a sea of blue over here and let's just give them all, our young ladies and our young men, a great round of applause. I know that we will soon be clearing out council chambers, but we're going to stick around to finish the rest of our meeting. Guys, go home. Have a great night. And parents um, and coaches, thank you for what you do for our town and for these young uh, men and women. Damon, where are you, Damon? Damon, I would be remiss if I do not take a moment to say thank you to our former councilman over here, Councilman Enriquez, for making sure we have this all put together. And for bringing us the best of the best, Damon. I knew you'd be back here. <laughs> good night, everybody. Good night, good night. We're going to continue with the rest of our meeting. Yeah, there is. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. I, I may be uh, <laughs> So for those people that are on um, the call here, hybrid-wise, um, we're just waiting for council chambers to empty out a little bit before we start the meeting, so that way you're able to hear without any interruptions. I appreciate everybody's um, patience, and I'm certain that you all wanted to celebrate with the rest of us our young accomplishments. I miss that. I do, too. It's a good way to kick things off. Okay. All right, Councilwoman June 4th is coming back, and that means we can continue with the rest of our meeting. We are still in the public portion, and uh, we're going to continue to allow residents to come up and speak on any and all issues. I know we have a couple in-house that would like to come up and speak. Uh, please do now, and if anybody on the call would like to speak, please press star nine. So come on up, Mr. Rizzo. Thank you for your patience there. I appreciate that. Not a, not a problem. I was actually going to come up and suggest that if uh, I was up next. but. Um... Robert Izzo, 21 North Edward Street. Uh, on the topic of ball fields, real quick, uh, Ms. Mar, uh, a couple of meetings ago, you had brought up paving the ball field on the corner of MacArthur and Dolan. Is that still? Paving? Yes, for a parking lot for the- um, Yes, oh, I recall right. you saying that, yes. Is because that still... of Dolan. Um, I know it was brought up with discussion uh, with our DPW 
director. However, it comes down to funding. I would love to turn that one field into a parking lot. I'm sure the residents on Dolan would love to turn that into a parking lot. Our uh, capital budget meeting is coming up. I think that's something that definitely needs to uh, be brought up for discussion. All right, well, just a little food for thought here, and this is just my personal opinion. Um, granted, that ball field isn't used that much, but if you actually, I'm not an engineer. That's more Jay's department, but if you actually look into that, I drove past that field the other day. It's lower, so to pave it, you'd have to bring up, you'd have to bring up the grade, and you have to find sewage and drainage and all that stuff. If the sole purpose for the parking lot is strictly for the community garden, there's probably like 40 other lots down there that we do have a parks and rec department in town or buildings and ground department that if you just got a bobcat or a tractor with a brush hog and uh, maintain even the property directly behind that community garden, I think it would, also, it would save the township a ton of money. And I think it would also give it more of a farm garden type feel like, you know, like, cause everybody's been pumpkin picking or Christmas tree shopping and what do you park on? The grass and it doesn't take much. You just maintain the property and spray paint a couple lines and there you go, rather than spending upwards of, it, I don't know how much it's gonna be, but it's not gonna be yeah, cheap. Yeah, no, that's a good point. It's so, not for the garden. The garden, there's ample parking on MacArthur and Junker. Um, it was for the Junior Bomber um, games when there's, you know, a hundred cars lining the streets. That's what it primarily the idea was for. But yeah, I guess you don't have to pave it. Uh, that's something to bring up for discussion. Yeah, because my only question is, I mean, I, I'm far removed, but when I played for the Leprechauns, we used to practice down there. We'd warm up down there before yeah. games. So I think getting rid of that field, I don't know if they still no, no, warm no, up just down the there. Baseball but part. That right. I just it was my own personal opinion. I didn't think it was the best idea, but you know, you guys can all discuss that and do what you will, you know, do what you will with it. Um, the real reason I'm up here is uh, the speed bumps again, or just the speeding on my street. So I talked with Councilman Conte. We had a nice conversation. I also spoke with Sergeant Braille. Um, after speaking with him, I did some thinking, and uh, our conversation was okay, but. I want a more permanent fix. So I would like to see if we could do speed bumps or speed humps in town, or on my block anyway, I don't, you know. Because after my conversation with him, he said, oh yeah, we could try this, we could try that. I spoke to him before Christmas, it's almost March. There's that radar sign that gets towed around, haven't seen that. I see a cop pass my block maybe once in a while because I think two of them live down the other end. The only emergencies on my block are when the two family house across the street has an OD or the other residents are riding their dirt bikes up and down the street. And there's still plenty of people speeding at all hours of the day. So with that, I'd like to know if it's possible to tack on to the end of a proposal with all the paving and stuff like that going on town. I'm sure there's plenty of projects. If we could just put it at the end, if you know, you could put a couple speed bumps on the block. I'm not asking for the whole block, potentially up to the 40s or 50s, no further than Charles Street. And if the answer is no, I'd like to know why, not like an excuse, because like I had spoke with Char Sergeant Braille and I'd asked him about the dummy car. Just, you know, I know we have cars and behind the police station that don't run or whatever, you could drive them over there and just leave them there. And his response to me, which really kind of bothered me was, oh, well, if to bring the car over there, I have to pay somebody to, drop it off and I kind of feel like part of my life is a BS excuse <clears throat> because I can go to the police station and drive it over to my house if you want and to pay somebody 15 minutes in overtime or even if it needs to be qualified as overtime that's just nonsensical it's not that hard to drive a police car and have somebody else pick them up like and that that excuse just kind of really got me thinking and that's why I want more of a permanent fix, and I'd like to hear your guys' opinion on it or why it's not possible if it isn't. So, Mayor, I do, I did last meeting ask if Sergeant Braille could attend the meetings moving forward because every meeting we do have a concern that, you know, we shouldn't be the middleman. They should be able to hear it from PD themselves. Um, I believe Sergeant Braille is on the call. Um, I don't know if he's still on the call with the lengthier meeting tonight, but. 
Mr. Frankel, I thought that he was going to be on the meeting tonight. There is one number on here. I do see that Dave is, uh, Dave Stabile's on here. He's PBA pres president, but I don't see anybody else on the call. The uh, 1173 number. So, um, Dan, you want to sure. take that? So, you want to uh, check and see? No, I don't think it is. I, I, I understand your concern, and um, I think I think you, are going to have to or we are going to have to work with you and with the traffic department um, we understand your concerns um, the speed bumps or humps has not been uh, the chief of police is very much against them well I don't put much faith in him either so okay well I, I have my own personal okay. reason for that but I'll let you okay continue. but I'm, I'm, I'm just I'm just saying so a lot of times the council does take the recommendations of the chief of police I understand your, your other your other suggestions of uh, putting shadow cars there or something like that I think it's a good it's a good suggestion and what you got I as an answer that idea. Okay. That. yeah and, and other other municipalities do it and even you see it in places where there's parking or issues or something like that to have a more permanent answer to your problem you're right there should be a more permanent answer so maybe what we could do is um, uh, we can't get with sergeant Braille we can't get with the chief um, and again, Pulaski's not the only road that we have issues uh, with. I'm on North Edwards Street. I don't know. North, North, North Edwards, definitely North Edwards, but North Edwards, but Pulaski. Pulaski. a nightmare, too. Yeah, you I mean, we have, other, we, have other night, we have other streets that are nightmares also. So we will. I'm aware we'll, of that, but my concern is the fact that my block, obviously, because I live on it, and also it's not a major it's not a major street in town. Johnson's Lane, I know, would be a little bit harder. Pulaski would be harder. Main Street, Washington Road, those are harder. So, so one of the one of the things your suggestion is, and it's not a bad suggestion, and we'll go over it with them, is that even put the police car right in front of your car, right in front of your house, and 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 you're offering it, and that's something that we could do, and I think that's something that's in, not a fix, but it's an easy s solution to let's see what we can do more of. Um, right. But do you understand my concern though? Because I spoke with him before Christmas. It's right. now basically March, and there's been no police presence, and I'm not. Like I said plenty of times, I used to be a firefighter, so I'm not against anybody as far as police or fire is concerned, but like this is the third time I'm up here speaking about it. And you know, but, but, to get an answer that I'd have to pay someone to drop no, the car no, off. That, that, no, 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 but this is what I'm telling you. This is very frustrating because, you know, it's like you're on that for an eight hour shift. That, that answer is completely unacceptable. Right. Like, you know, like what, what is that? You have to pay someone? Oh, I'm sorry. Like, I used to be on the borough's insurance. Like, let me come pick it up, and I'll drive it over to my house. Right. That's the answer you're going to give me as a sergeant in the police department? That's unacceptable. You are hey, Dan, what if, what if we were to, because I had said this at one point before about buying a bunch of flashing yellow signs that say slow down and post them on a bunch of our streets. I know it, it'll cost a little bit, but I don't know that it would cost that much, and maybe there's even a grant for that or something where we just post them in 20 different locations, and we post a, you know, a flashing yellow. Somebody sees a flashing yellow, they may still slow down, because they see it, it, oh, let me slow down. I mean, it's, it's something to raise there, awareness. There are grants available for that, too. That is something that we should look into, and I believe that, it, now, I remember when I brought it to you a number of years ago, and we did, uh, what was it, the smart streets, the smart, uh, um, that is something, and, and we should still belong to that. If we don't, I, I believe we renewed that. They have excellent, excellent suggestions, ideas, and oftentimes um, can even guide us into grant directions to get those types of things. Right. That's why we that that's why I pushed so hard to turn around and have us a part of that. We weren't a part of that for a long time. That's one option um, that we need to look into in order to get that that money fixed and stuff. But I hear what Mr. Rizzo is saying. Like this, this has been long enough. We we need to be. We need to be moving. So uh, the, a couple of things I am happy to hear. You did actually get to have the conversation with Mr. Brown. That was most important. I wanted the two of you to speak. Um, I know that Mr. Conti, who you have spoken to him as well. But you've spoken to all of us at this point. And we need some type of immediate action at this, this level. Um, I'm not going to address, but Dan Frank, I'm going to tell you right now, I don't want to hear that because of the cost of moving a vehicle is a reason why we can't turn around and put a dummy car in place. I'm not even going to address it because it's unacceptable and it's not an excuse. It's not a reason that should never be utilized as a reason for some for a residents not getting some type of assistance. 
Um, we have spent many a dollar on something a lot, a lot, a lot less important than moving a car. I've been a proponent of the whole dummy car situation for a long time. I brought it up here years ago in certain spots because yes, South River does it, many other towns do, and God knows we have enough cars, okay? That needs to be addressed immediately. I want it fixed, I want that as an option, and let's just see what happens, and it should be done. I'll give you 48 hours. Mayor, I also requested, 48 hours, that's I also it. requested that the tickets uh, being issued, um, Karen mentioned at prior meetings, you know, we need to know that they're pulling people over. And I requested the monthly reports, and instead I got an annual report, and we need monthly reports. We need to know that action is being taken. And I'm frustrated for you, Mr. Izzo, because I requested that Sergeant Braille be at this meeting tonight, and why he's not here, I'm disappointed, because it shouldn't have to come from us. We are the middlemen, and it shouldn't come from us. And I'm sorry that he's not here tonight, and I'm sorry that you're frustrated, because I'm frustrated as well. Right. Um... So this is not going to be over very quickly. You can see that there's a level of frustration for you, uh -huh. in addition to your frustration. Uh, I, this this should not. Does anybody here object to in 48 hours we there there should be a car on that street and the front of your house? Whatever. They have the address. There you go. Honestly, um, it'd be great if you could put it in front that. of 24 because that's the problem. Okay. Yeah. But whatever. I don't care. I mean, but, but it's a start. Like it. it, it yeah. 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 And I know. Like you're not going to care whether or not that car is in front of your house at all. Like you want safety. Yeah. You want to make sure your kids are safe. Absolutely. Um, any and objection here from the council in reference to turning around and having a 48 hour turnover in reference to placing a car in front of that house? Very good. Um, but in addition, that's not going to stop everything, but I'm telling you, you're going to see an impact with that. We've talked a lot about over the years of me being up here, and I know Mary as well, when it comes to speed humps and speed bumps. There's a myriad of reasons why that is that is pretty much poo pooed in almost every town. No, but I, I, that's that's a that's for a, a long time. It's been, I know we've tried it. We've tried it. Um, that's, that's Mary, you want to talk uh, about years ago? We tried uh, it. Uh, Well, my, res my response to that would be not to be disrespectful, but if you don't see the speed hump, that's on you because everywhere I go, where there are, where there are speed bumps and speed humps, there's signs. Most of them, the majority of them are painted yellow, and there's also plenty of warning ahead of time. I know. So, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is if you go over that speed limit, right. But I think yeah, but my thing, how many people get in accidents because of speed homes? How many people get in accidents because of speed homes? It doesn't matter. It can only be one, and that's going to be a, a couple. That's going to be a big that's... litigation for us. <laughs> yeah, rumble strips are different. Yeah, I think we need to physically do something. We need to do something immediate. 48 Put hour turnover out, for a car. A the other more infrastructure type things that require the money and then engineering or something or further, because that's going to take paperwork and stuff and it's going to, that's not going to solve your problem now. Let's try and get you something so that way we can test and see, hey, does that police vehicle make a difference? Because you don't want to sit there and wait for engineering reports, speed humps, rumble strips, and all that nonsense, because you'll be back up here wanting to, you know, charge well, this place. To be completely honest with you, odds are I'm not going to go away. Because oh, I know you're not. That's I don't good. Under, in my mind, the excuses that there are for not having speed humps, I just don't think they're acceptable. Like I understand like, that. Like the, the whole, you know, emergency response situation. Like, because I was expecting someone to bring that up, and you kind of did. But if it's the emergency response time and the damage to the vehicles and stuff like that, like I said prior meetings, I was a firefighter in Melrose for 13 years. So let's talk about damage to the vehicles. 
every year or every two years when you guys come up for re-election, you come up and the first thing that we would ask you is, when are you guys gonna fix the roads up here? The two major arteries out of Melrose, Cross Avenue, Oak Street, and Andrew Jeske, um overpass are horrendous. And I don't care if it's a fire alarm, structure fire, car fire, motor vehicle accident, no matter what, you take those fire trucks out of that firehouse, they're getting battered. It's $3 million worth of equipment up there. And every time they roll the truck out, whether you go fast or slow, the trucks are getting beat up. So vehicle damage is not a reasonable excuse, I don't think. And I mean, honestly, come sit on my porch for an evening. Like the, uh, yeah, a cop car will work temporarily, but yeah, I want to, like, I'd like a more permanent fix. You know, like I thought there were gonna be some other things that I could bring up here, but like, I need a permanent fix. So I'm not, I'm not going here. I'm not moving out of town. Unless like something happens where I hit the lottery or whatever, I'm not moving out of town. I'm not big on change. Okay, I grew up in this town, I was raised in this town, and I'm gonna stay in this town. But I want a more permanent fix. And like the, the reasons that you're giving me, I just don't, how do other towns get away with having speed humps? Legality wise or what have you, like how do, how do they do it that we can't do it? Why can't we try it? I mean, you, you, I know you tried it on Eugene, I get that. Eugene is a little bit more heavily traveled than my block, I believe. My block is not that heavily traveled, but when it is traveled, the cars that drive by, like I'll sit at my dinner table and just, and just where are you going? The corner's 500 feet away. And with the warmer weather coming up, if one of my kids gets hit, there'll be hell to pay. And I just don't hear a, a reasonable reason up here why we can't try speed humps or something. Because, I mean, if it's going to be, oh, well, you know, we have to worry about the borough workers, well, or the snow, because I know that was an issue. The first people that go out in the snow is the road department, if I'm not mistaken, followed by the sanitation department. Now, those two departments, I would think, would know the roads in town. So if we did try speed bumps on my block, you know, the road department will know that, and sanitation will know that. So the whole snow argument, with that's off the table. And these are things that I wrote down that I thought were going to use to counter I don't my conversation think but that we're at the point right now to i like you know i don't want you to have to go through that whole litany i know that you are clear and you have very 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 um good arguments against why speed humps should not be considered does that make sense there did i almost right yeah, yeah. no 100 <laughs> um but I don't think that we're there yet because I'm gonna tell you right now, if you're looking for the council to, is anybody on the council willing to turn around and make a motion and say, put speed humps on that road right now without conferring with our engineers and everything? Anybody willing to do that? I mean. I'd certainly like to confer, but I'd certainly be in favor of putting a couple of humps out there unless they had a dramatic excuse why we couldn't. Right, so that's what I'm saying. But if nobody's willing to turn around and do that without first taking a listen to Jay looking at all areas, and then you can come back again. But unless somebody up here wants to turn around and say, let's put in the humps right now, I don't know. Does anybody on the council want to do that? Um, we are not professionals. This is why our professionals need to attend our meetings. This is ridiculous. We cannot be making these decisions alone. And no matter how many times I request that our professionals attend these meetings, it is not honored. So I think moving forward, our professionals need to attend the meetings so that they can make the professional decision. Let's make this easy. We'll turn around and do this. So first, the 48 hour turnaround car is gonna be there in 48 hours if I have to drive it over there myself. Um, second is uh, I think that we need to turn around and have a discussion at our, you know, we can turn around and do a professional conversation, however we wanna set it up, where we can get insight from our professionals in reference to speed humps. That's something I think we can turn around and do and have that conversation at our next meeting. And that way, everybody up here that not an engineer wouldn't even think I tossed it over to Mary because I know that she had more experience within the town when that was there. Let's all get together collectively so you can make an informed decision, um, entertaining and discussing and figuring out and taking into account Mr. Izzo's issues, but also all the issues that could appear uh, arise within the borough after speaking with our professionals. And that way, Mr. Izzo, you can keep your list of things that you would argue against, but we would actually be able to process what our professionals have said as well. I don't well, think it's I, fair to waste your time because nobody up here is willing to turn around and give you the remedy you're looking for yet. 
No, I understand that, and I understand yeah. it's not going to like I'm going to snap my fingers and things are going to. Yeah, no, you've been around long but, enough. You know, nothing in government goes like that. <laughs> but isn't is if I'm not mistaken, is Jay is that his department? Like he's the professional. It, on it is for to that, a certain degree, that... but I'm assuming you would, we would have to then talk also with our police again, with traffic safety, with you know DPW, with those. I, there's quite a few professionals. I think I'd like I love to hang everything on Jay, um, like a Christmas tree. I'll hang every ornament on there as well. I think he's going to be one of the people that we definitely go to, but I do think there's going to be some more conversations with some of the other professionals in the in the borough. Right, because I looked it up online, and unfortunately, I didn't have time to go home and print it out the ordinance for it. And I'm pretty sure my block is right in line with everything that qualifies. As far you have as... more information than we do. Like you have more information than I do as well. Um, but I'm certain that the council also, like I'm saying. I think we're going to end up having another conversation. You're going to need to save that and bring that up again because you're That's going fine. to fight for what you want. Give us the opportunity to talk and get a little bit more well versed on it. So for those council people that agree with you, they can turn around and, you know, speak their piece also with the professionals and also the insight you bring. I'm not trying to blow you off at all. I'm just no, saying I, that I don't that. want I just... you to be frustrated even more today because I'm not, I'm not frustrated. It's just that I don't I haven't heard anything in all reality that it's I compelling. haven't heard a good reason not to do it. Like, yeah, if, I hear you. You're going to tell me, like, if you drove over at your, you know, the oil pan, your car's going to fall out? All right, maybe. But, like, there's nothing, I don't, I don't know. I mean, like, I just, if maybe if you do have an accident going over a speed hump, well, maybe you should have slowed down. Like, yeah. They're there. Like, you know, mm -hmm. like, they're, they're signs, they're painted yellow. Like, you know, like, I mean, in New York, they have them where there's triangles painted up to them to the ends of them. So it's at least a stretch of 10 feet of paint. So, I mean, you can't miss it. Mm -hmm. I mean, even if it's snow covered, if it's six inches of snow, you can yeah. see the variable grade in the ground. You know, I mean, it's not like we get two feet of snow where everything's buried and you can't see it. Like, it's, I don't know, I just, and I'm not trying to be disrespectful to anybody. I just think it's an excuse. Oh, like I that. understand. And, I, and you may be very well right. I just don't think that you're not going to get anywhere um, further tonight with that argument yet. Um, no, and you I might, and I you just... probably have supporters already. I mean, everything that you're saying makes sense to us right now. We're gathering what you're saying, but please give us the opportunity to talk with the professionals too, so we can we can hear all sides of the argument. All right. I just hope that it's not like you're just not you per se, I'm... but everyone is just saying that just to shut me up and get me away from. No, I'm that. not. I just <laughs> like I know how certain people stand, but I just think that it is an issue, and and um, and not just for my block. Like maybe we could do a trial where you pick three blocks in town. Hopefully, yeah. my blocks. Well, oh, you're not the only person you that know? we we could end up having 600 um, speed bumps by the end of the year, you know. So. I, I'm just saying, like I said, I'm not opposed to it. I'm not opposed to considering it at all. Um, but I do try to make some more informed decisions. But um, the council is going to have to hear that as well. It doesn't get to me unless right. unless there's there's a split. <laughs> well, if it comes to a meeting and like whatever, I'd like to be kept in the loop. And I'm you know how to get in touch with you. Get in touch you know with how me. to get me. Yeah, I'm easy. So, <laughs> I mean, I'd you know, like to be kept in the loop with whatever it is, because like I told you, I'm not going away. So. Absolutely not. I knew you, know, you were here. And, and the cop car, like I said, like it's a temporary fix. It's a great idea. By the third day, people are going to be, oh, there's no cop in that car. Mm -hmm. Well, I think so, we're going to well, have to marry that with not just dummy vehicle, but actually putting somebody in there, yeah, too. Put them that's in there the once thing. in a while and be like, oh. Totally yes. over that's, uh, that's on Zabrowski. And you know, what else is, you know what else is good, too, is you know it doesn't have to stay stationed in front of your house. We move it around a little bit, and you put the human in there, and then the ticket comes out. That's that suddenly thing. gets around very so, quickly. When something hits your wallet, that changes behavior. I think it's a Pavlov's theory, you know. Like. I, I don't know. It seems that he's pretty sure um, he's the biggest culprit on the street. No, because half the time they drive by so fast, I can't even You can't tell, tell yeah. I mean, there's a couple cars that are repeat offenders that, you know, me and the neighbors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because it's not only the kid, it's the parent that's paying for that. Yep. So, 
Um, special meeting on March 7th was going to be about bus depot. So you don't have to come for that one. No, you definitely to that want to be I here. And to that one. listen, call, call any one of us because you have our attention mm -hmm. and we're not happy. Um, so we want to solve this problem. We want to, uh, we want to solve this problem throughout our whole town. And Mayor, if I didn't make myself clear earlier, I would like a monthly breakdown of tickets from the police department, a monthly report moving forward. Dan's got that. Thank you for your time. Thanks, Mr. Rizzo. Um, ladies and gentlemen, anybody else from the public wish to speak? All right. He's got it, yeah. Okay, yes, thank you. <laughs> Karen Bieberts, 9 Burlington Road. Uh, I want to thank, thank uh, Council President Moore for um, remembering the conversation. I've been beating this drum about speeding in our town for at least a year. Mm -hmm. I reminded everyone of what happened right in the backyard here on Dolan Street with Jimmy Kehoe. Um, I'm looking for accountability myself. I had spoken to Sergeant Braille at the Centennial, actually, and I had discussed with him Johnson's Lane. Johnson's Lane, he brought up a great point. It's in a school zone. So as Mr. Rizzo, who I've had his six before on this issue, only because it is the truth, um, when they come around that curve past the cemetery, they're doing 40 miles an hour and literally two, 300 feet away is the stop sign. So I have asked a couple of times about the flashing signs or anything. Um, we do have speed bumps, I believe, in the Colony Club. They still exist there off Journey Mill Road. But, um, and That's then probably, again, yeah. you know, we talk about tickets. We have a four-man minimum most of the week for 45,000 people. Where are these officers going to be around? I'm lucky if they're there on Johnson's Lane in the school zone. It's rare. So um, I just wanted to bring those points to your attention and hopefully you'll keep them in mind and thank you uh michelle for requesting monthly reports and i'm and sure they are there i'm sure that they're around and it would be helpful for us to see where they are issuing tickets right it, thank you yeah to keep track of it again accountability so thank you very much thank you very much all right anybody else from the uh public wish to speak on any and all issues all right ladies and gentlemen then oh sorry go ahead mr Rizzo. One other thing that um, she brought up, the whole four-man minimum thing. So I have a friend that works in South River and a friend that works in South Amboy. So, you know, South River is about a quarter the size of this town, and their minimum is three. South Amboy is probably about an eighth of the size of this town. Their minimum is two. So if you do the math, how is a four-man minimum for a town that's four times the size of South River and eight times the size of South Amboy acceptable? Just to tack on to her point, like, I just... I think that's something yeah. that also needs to be addressed down the road as far as like police Dan, staffing. how do you address so. the number of minimum men on um, patrol? Well, that's also another problem because, well, I'm not going to go there, but that's, um, yeah. well, if certain people didn't kick, remove people from the list to get to this one's friend or John Wisniewski wrote this one a letter and so on and so forth and we cherry pick from the pot, you know, you'd probably get more suitable candidates, but I'm not going to say anything further than that. That's something for the chief to look inward on or what have you, whatever. But, you know, like, honestly, like, you know, I was always under the assumption that it was four man minimum with two floaters, one for each section, but that's still, that's not enough. It's not enough. So that's it. Thank you, Mr. Izzo. All right. Anybody else from the public wish to speak? Come on up, Mr. Duffy. Okay. Uh, I'm just give a suggestion. I feel like I'm in school, though. I have to say, like, um, when the when the pews are open, everybody goes to the back. <laughs> like, but go ahead, Mr. Rob, Duffy. Robert Duffy, 111 go Merritt ahead, Avenue. Uh, I just have a suggestion. Hold of on course, for a sec. Of course. Enforcement would be the easiest. Absolutely. Okay. I would, if the gentleman lives on that road, to answer your question, Mrs. Moore, he could take down how many people he sees when he's home that are speeding. Five cars, eight cars, ten cars, from four o'clock to ten o'clock. Like, get it narrowed and then put your two police officers in that time. 
Once the word gets out that you're going in their pocketbook, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it goes away. Absolutely. So let him do a little research to give you a time, like four to eight, four to six, we get 30 cars and 18 of them are speeding. Then you can do something. I'm familiar with Good the neighborhood. It's Duffy. probably rush hour. People will try to beat right, the light. Right, yeah, but yeah, you don't want them there at 2 in the afternoon. Right. Probably, but let them give you a number if you can. How many? They, the Wait. police actually have a machine. They have a car counter, yeah. And they would count the cars. They would yeah, but they don't count how fast they go. Yes, it does. Yes, it, it does. Exactly. It does? It's a box, yeah. I know the... the the big oh, no, sign. This with is something that goes across the roadway. Yeah. And when you go over it, it tells the time of the day. Okay. How well, the there's your survey. Yeah. I think the you're, new you're ones. You're absolutely right. The new okay. ones on North Erdston, and the solar and operated and ones, do Mrs. that Mrs. Novak, too, when they produce their I, own I like your liability with the bumps. Yeah. How about when you got a bad road and there's potholes? And is oh. that, that's liability to you too, right? Mm -hmm. well, fix Ann Terrace. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Duffy. All right, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> one more time, Mr. Izzo. I'll give you one more try because we're not. <laughs> no, not even close. Like, to his point, I spoke to Sergeant Brown. You got to come to the microphone, though. No, you can't, yeah. We can't do that. Sorry. That's, we, we got your address. You don't need it again. Right. Sorry. <laughs> but Mr. just Izzo. to add to his point, I did speak to Sergeant Brown. I told him between 5 and 9. Because I'm not home. You gave him the day, window so I don't already. See it. I said between 5 and 9 rush hour, that's when I see it because that's when I'm home. Because that's when you're home, yeah. And. I haven't Start seen there. a red or blue light on my block still. Like I said, maybe for an overdose across the street, and you know, and whenever whoever lives down the block wants to stop home or whatever, that's it. So, gotcha. You know, but Thanks, Mr. Home. Rizzo. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll try it once, twice, three times. It looks like we are now going to adjourn. Uh, I'm sorry, close the public and adjourn. Do I have a motion? I'd like to make a motion to close the public portion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Nay. Next, adjourned. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's do this now. Everybody up. You said it like that was yep, already that's, that's okay. Go ahead, man. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, ladies and gentlemen, statement of publication again, please, Jessica. You can take your time. Oh. Take notice that this regular meeting of the mayor and council being held on this 28th day of February 2022 has been advertised and posted in accordance with Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975. Roll call, please. Council Persons Conti. Here. June 4. Here. Mar. Novak. Here in the back. Yep. Anoha. Here. Roberts. Here. All right, any comments on the ordinances presented at the prior meeting? Up oh. she's up first. What's that? No, Mary. Mary's up first. Can I read it for her? Skip her for now? Yeah, we can go back on that. Okay. Uh, let's go on to new business and then, uh, or actually, do we want to go? Well, Novak, Novak, Novak. Mar, you're my last one. I mean, it's we're, we're good. That's it. You were looking at the first ones for, oh, you mean for committee reports? Yeah, yeah. committee reports. Yeah, we'll just skip committee reports and we're going to go over to planning and zoning then. So. Yeah. Councilman Anoa, planning and zoning. Um, I move the following minutes and reports uh, to be received and filed. Um, construction officials report for the month of January 2022. Fire prevention report for the month of January 2022 and zoning and code enforcement reports for the months of November uh, 2021 and January 2022. Uh, do I have a second? Second. second. Thank you. Anything under committee reports, Mr. Anoha? Well, Councilman Anoha. Councilman Anoha. I'll, I'll take Mr. Sue. <laughs> uh, no, not now. Um, no. Progress it is? Progress, though. Um, I think the only notables, I think, was uh, off of public portion comment on you know club tour and our discussion with the planning board on that and how um, and of course Jay did due diligence on um, you know the criteria in which it met and you know it's just a preliminary stage and we're looking forward to more details as we work with the board on that thank you very much for that update I appreciate that and we'll have more to talk about that um, at our next meeting when the ordinance is up for introduction nope. so, uh, moving on then we're going to go to public safety councilwoman June 4th 
Thank you so much. I move the following minutes report to be filed and received from A through C. Okay. Is there a second? Mm -hmm. Second. Thank you. And uh, moving on to applications. You want to go on now to the application for membership as firefighter. Because you already approved your minutes um, listed one, two, and three. So that was a receive and file. Now you're going to go to letter B for application for membership that we'll read. Okay. The application for membership as firefighter received from the following Jeremy Bolting and Stephen Colders accepted by engine number one at their February 24, 2022 meeting. Sorry, I did it so fast. I did A through C. That, that's okay. Certain ones you have, certain oh, ones we need to read out, though. Any objection to that? Three. Okay, you're going to move on to uh, the letter of resignation, that will, um, and then we'll ask for a second. Okay. The letter of resignation as a firefighter was received from Mr. Drew Newcomb, Jr. from Melrose House. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. And now committee reports. Um, the committee reports that I have is I actually want to thank everyone out Thank everyone for coming to our HRC event that took place at Black History Month, where we had some panelists that came out. Thank you for everyone that was able to attend. God bless you all. Um, piggyback off of what um, council president was requesting for, I actually did go over my um, reports, and I wasn't submitted those things, extensive details. So I don't have that. So it's not somewhere in my archives. Thank you so, for looking. So I don't have that. But I did ask Councilman Conti, who was former serving on public safety, and he did um, clarify some things for me further, but it's not in my archives. And that's it for committee reports. Thank you very much. And yes, that was a great event with the HRC. I couldn't speak on it. My audio wasn't working, but I was able to at least uh, listen and, and follow along with what everybody, and it was a nice turnout. So beautiful job again, as always. Public Works, Councilman Conti. Thank you. I move the following minutes and reports be received and filed. The uh, Public Works Supervisor's reports for building and grounds, parks, recycling roads, and sanitation and garage services all for the month of January 2022. Second. Thank you. And committee reports. Um, I, listen, I want to thank uh, the kids for coming out tonight. <clears throat> that is a, um, always a, a joyful event. Uh, we've been talking about so many things lately that have been um, you know, frustrating. Uh, so to see the kids come out tonight, I was really happy. Thank Damon for uh, organizing that for the girls and the boys. Uh, make us proud. And that's it from me. Thank you very much. Uh, water and sewer environmental. Councilman Roberts, please. Thank you, Mayor. Move the following minutes be received and filed. The water and sewer director's report for the month of January 2022. Second. And committee reports. Okay. Um, just a, a couple of things that I saw in our packet that um, I wanted to just bring attention to, the Stairwell Association for Brain Injured Children's 25th Anniversary Charity Ball, Sunday, April 10th from 12 to 5. So um, be looking for that on your calendar to attend and advertise. Um, very worthy um, organization. Um, I also want to say I attended, I know, um, Councilman Novak, I saw you online too, um, for the, the speakers for Black History Month. And um, I just wanted to let everyone know it was very informative. They were um, a cerebral teacher and her student um, who has gone on to some great things. And the um, one of the things that stood out to me was an organization that Mr. Ernest Holmes, he was a technical program manager, um, brought out was thecodehouse.org which is for um, youth in STEM. So um, very, very proud of uh, what they did and Mindy Schiffman's um, bringing that program together. I certainly hope more people can attend in the future. This was still um, remote and online, so hopefully we'll be back in person. Yes. And then I did, we did get a letter about the TNR with some changes to be made. Um, yeah, you know what? We're going to submit that to some other departments for their comments. Okay. And uh, one is the Board of Health. So as soon as we have that, um, uh, my morning phone call will also include uh, <laughs> Bailey. Okay, just wanted to make sure that that got taken care of. Thank you. That's all. 
Thank you very much, Councilman Roberts. Now we're going to move over to recreation. Council President Moore, please. Thank you, Mayor. I move the following minutes reports be received and filed. The Recreation Department report for the month of January 2022. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. An application for special event received from the following. Uh, Sri Dorkadish Temple to hold a bonfire celebration on March 19th, 2022 from 5 to 9 p.m. All paperwork in for that? Not Still waiting for the reports, so yeah, still waiting. needs a resolution. So okay, for next so meeting for next meeting. So you're still waiting on that paper. Thanks, Jeff. All right, and any committee reports? Uh, before I go over my laundry list, I would like to have a moment of silence for the innocent people in Ukraine. Uh, so my laundry list of things that I'm trying to accomplish this year, um, as always, attention on Kennedy Park. I know our capital budget meeting's coming up. The park really needs the rubber matting. It's our one of our biggest parks in town, yet it does not have it yet. Um, the mural, I know, Dan, you said that the bridge mural wasn't an option because the parkway would not give authority. Woodbridge has theirs on the Route 9 bridge. It's a state home. Is that an option since Woodbridge has it, Dan? The Route 9, I think Mary's correct. Route 9 is a state highway where the others is, is, is controlled by the Turnpike Authority, so it's two different entities, so we can't do that. But Woodbridge has it on? Route 9 is a state, meaning the state highway, the state, the state government. The request through the state. But the other one is through the New Jersey Turnpike right. Authority, which we can't. Okay. They said no. Okay, so can we please request through the state? Um, also. I'm sorry, wait, I'm sorry, request the state what? For the possibility of doing a mural where on the route nine what route nine <laughs> which beneath the route nine bridge it's on bordentown by the entrance to route nine north and south. okay Sovereign so you're Bay. talking about as you're heading towards south amboy you're saying yeah it's in that terrible yeah. area by burlew right yeah. yep. okay 14 roads that need building. Eugene, right? Isn't Eugene over there? Uh, I know you also mentioned the Amboy Theater being a possibility. I've made contact with the representative who represents the new owners. I've asked him to ask the uh, owners if that could be a possibility. Still have not received any answer back. Yeah, because it's very discouraging to know that someone could buy that property and leave it in that condition um, when it is the first thing that we see entering our town. Um, I know regarding Dolan Street, uh, Sergeant Braille mentioned adding a crosswalk and limited parking signs. I hope that comes to fruition soon. Uh, I'll follow up on that. A rec center. Um, we need a rec center in town. Every other town has a rec center. I'm sure there's an exception, but most other towns have rec centers. Mayor, do you know of any possibilities for a future rec center? I'm ready to go with that. Um, I did at the beginning of, um, well, just before the pandemic, at the beginning of my mayorship, I had reached out and I had met with um, Dave Samuels and Jay briefly so that we could entertain and take a look at some properties that would fit that bill. We had a couple of meetings and there were two other council people that were also with me. That was uh, Kevin and also Damon that also met with uh, Dave Samuels. And I think that um, it's something we should entertain and we should look at, and I think there's excellent opportunities to do so. One of the things that we did see as a major hurdle is obviously relating to money, relating to who would run that. We do not have the employee staff in order to turn around and run a rec center, and we also don't have the money to turn around and hire a staff to run a rec center. But there are other ways to turn around and accomplish that. If I believe there's a, there's a will, there's a way. So we entertain possibly looking into uh, you know, if you build it, they were come kind of thing, looking at uh, private monies coming in, having somebody actually run the facility, lease it in us. Yeah, exactly. But then us being able to utilize um, certain areas for ourselves, anything from office space, anything from uh, community uh, spaces, so that way our kids have a place to go. One of my big pushes when that was kind of being brainstormed and thought about is the importance of STEM and technology and places for kids to turn around after school 
that are not involved in sports, but to turn around and actually get involved in anything from robotics. We also talked about working with the Center for Lifelong Learning and actually doing a partnership with them um, in some of their projects and their endeavors. So there has been uh, discussions. With the pandemic, things were slowed and obviously had to be more focused on what the town needed at, at that moment. But I think we're opening back up and I think those conversations need to come back to the table. So let's do it. Um, space is obviously one of the biggest things. Obviously we're looking at property for a bus transportation facility, but I will tell you this, I believe a rec center is something that's gonna service a heck of a lot more people. Um, so I would hate to turn around and see possible properties that would be using, we'd be using as a rec center, potentially whether I'm here or you're here or anybody else. Um, and, and, and giving something away for a bus depot. So we have to think about that. I think there's uh, no reason why we can't share property or we all have a common yeah. purpose to uh, better the town. So I think with all of the let's do spaces it. that were on that list, both are doable. Yeah, um, definitely let's go. I'm ready for a rec center and I don't think there's any resident um, that I can see that a negative would come out of a, uh, I am actually not comfortable with the word rec center. I believe that it should be used, the name should, be, this is a community center. Yeah. Recreation is often thought about as only yeah. sports and serving a smaller population. No, we but need a theater. I believe a community center is really what we need. Yeah, agreed. Um, I know you were looking into seeing if we could get hang the banners down Main Street. You Any need to get approval that, from... Uh, the request is in a JCPNL. I've not heard back from them. Okay. Um, I had a discussion with Elise. She's having a contest. She reached out to the schools to do our uh, blue garbage cans in town to have some artwork put on them and wrap them so that they were preserved. So I'm excited about that. Uh, last meeting, I mentioned the electric shift and proposing electric charging stations at our park and ride. Um, where can we start with that? We, we have a very interesting proposal that we're working on that may uh, combine that. We are looking at the idea of getting a grant for an electric bus for the carrying our seniors. Okay. Um, there's a grant money that's out for that right now. We've applied for that grant. I think it, it, the application was due March 4th, but it is in. Um, with that comes two charging stations, um, which would probably be at, at the senior center area. Um, nice. So it's something where the, each one of those charging stations probably cost somewhere between ten and twelve thousand uh, dollars. If we're able to be successful, we might be able to combine both of those and the bus and the charging stations and have everything. Uh, but that's 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 been applied for. I don't know if we're going to get it, but that's applied for. Okay. Great. Uh, community garden there's a meeting tomorrow 7 p.m um so far we have 18 registered for the plots so that's exciting and we still have about that number left so the first people to send in their registration and i believe it's 50 dollars will secure a spot for our first ever community garden uh, and that's it progress wonderful thank you very much that brings to me i'll keep this um oh i'm sorry mary we did not i <laughs> It's too, it, when it's on the other page. <laughs> Mary, I'm sorry. Administration and Finance, Councilman Novak. Yes, I'd like to make a motion to receive and file the reports as listed on the agenda A, one, two, and three. There a second. Thank you. I request uh, for purchase of block 337, lot nine on Warwick and Yorkshire. Report from the open space is attached. Uh, approve or deny. Is everybody in favor? Everybody, everybody in favor of that? So I've got a question about that one. Are we able to request a, um, a reason? Well, if you, um, I don't know whether the report actually showed a picture. It's I a know where it is. It's across piece. the street from my house. Yeah, it's a triangular piece I know. of property. I know where it is. I, w I would like to know what they're planning to do with that because uh, it serves as a bend around the, the street, and I don't know if, they're planning to, I got, I'd be interested to see what they're gonna do with that property in case um, they're gonna change anything. I don't know if they could or, well, I'd like to find that out before. I think that 
was included in their letter, exactly what they were going to do. Yeah, but that was so long ago, I can't even remember, Jay, do you? I mean, they actually requested this so long ago. Didn't they take over for um, Downey, who was buying that property, who was building houses on that property? Yeah. And this was, uh, the, that piece, that little piece that was there is going to, it's not going to straighten out the road or anything, it's just going to add to the frontage, the front yards, yeah. so they're able to, I, I believe, Jay Wright put a... That's correct, yeah, it's right. about a 3,000 square foot piece of property. Right. This property was subdivided by Mr. Downey. He right. sold it to someone else. The council actually authorized the sale of this property a couple of years ago, and it was never followed through. Yeah, so Mr. Kupcher's latest time. letter is saying that he doesn't think he needed a new appraisal. The mm -hmm. Open Space Committee already recommended it be sold. It's of no value to the borough, and it's really just going to increase the front yard of two houses that were approved with the subdivision. And they, they, it's not going to make that they can build any more houses. It can just make the front yard bigger. They've already been approved for two houses there. It, it looks they have like three there. They put three there. Um, this is in front of two. There's still a third. You're correct. Yeah. Third. So it's just um, to in, in, um, enlarge the front property. It, it looks like their front yard anyway. When you look at it. I know. It, it, it actually looks like I know. That's property. why I'm wondering why they need to buy it. <clears throat> they, well. I mean, it's, it's, it's for sale. We'd have to sell that to them, right? There's a legal procedure where you would sell it to the adjacent owner. Okay, because we shouldn't give it away for free. Yeah, I think that there was an appraised value of approximately $3,000 a few years ago, and Mr. Cups is saying that value probably hasn't changed, so he's recommending you don't even need a new appraisal. You just sell it to them based upon... Well, maybe we, maybe we should decide that. That's up to you. Right? His recommendation. We could take that money and buy speeding signs or something like that with it. Yeah. Um, all right, so as long as they can't do anything to develop it, it's just front lawn, and that's it. And so, you could also okay. have a deed restriction on the sale saying that it can't be developed. Well, it's, it's so small. It's only 3,000 square feet. You can't really do it with it. I know that. I'm just concerned. Um, that's all. So. All right, ladies and gentlemen, anything else? Uh, Councilman Novak, continue, please. Yep, still going here. Yep. Okay. Uh, uh, no, she has a, a tax sales authorization certification. to issue duplicate tax sales certificate to Archer Financial. Any objection? Okay, committee reports. Couple of things. Um, Going to pl uh, plan a meeting for the first budget workshop for the twenty first of March at seven p.m. Dan, will you make sure that the uh, department heads are there? Right, does anybody have any conflict with the twenty first? Can I ask? If it's at all possible, I think because of the department heads and everything, could we maybe start at 6 p.m.? Is that possible? Uh, I'm great with 6 p.m. Does anybody have any problems to start at 6 p.m.? 7 p.m. on the 21st? 7 p.m. 7 p.m. We'd like to do 6 because we'd have to bring as many department heads in as possible. So, 6 o'clock, okay, March 21st? Monday. Monday. 6. Okay, thank you. All right, anything else, Councilman Novak? Yes. Uh, I'd like to, uh, the group that puts the flags up on the bridge uh, requested that we ensure them for hold harmless. And uh, I, I said that we were, uh, I talked to Mike, found out what the procedure is and everything that Woodbridge is doing it. And I'd like to know if the council is willing to follow through on this because they're, they're still waiting to find out. Otherwise, they're going to have to remove this. Everybody understand what that? I, I support it. Yeah, they're just putting a flag. I mean, I support only the American flag. No, it's not what they're putting up. It's that to keep the flags up there, period, what's there, they have to have a whole harmless insurance policy. They, don't, they only have enough money to replace their flags. So Woodbridge actually insured their group so that the town is actually holding the insurance note so that the parkway will allow it to happen, allow them to keep mm -hmm. the flags up there. Right, and I, and I, um, I directed, um, I shared the information with you yeah. about because they wanted to go through the insurance, the borough, and they would take care of the flags, we would do the insurance. Right, you recall that? Yeah. Is it, is it an official organization or just with the people? Yeah, I support that. Would that be a problem? No? Okay. Just making sure I was just asking uh, 
Mr. Dufont. Yeah, I just, you know, just to prove it, subject to uh, GIF giving the uh, proper yeah. insurance. So any objection to that? To be included in the insurance, right? Yeah. Yeah, yes, exactly. Yeah. And this would be for the existing flag, correct? There's only be two flags. There's only two flags that are up there right now, correct? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so no objection from the council? I, I don't see any issue with that either. So Mike, let us know, speak to the GIF, and if anything changes, let us know. Anything else, Councilman Novak? Yeah, I've been, um, we have a contract with Jersey Central. I think we pay something like $750,000 a year for uh, the streetlights in town. And there's just numerous streetlights out. And we used to have public works go out at night to, uh, you know, identify which, because you can only tell if the lights are out if you're out there at night. So they would go out at night and identify the poles by number and then report it to Jersey Central. And then we stopped doing that. We turned it over to the police department. There's, there's something like four or five lights out on Journey Mill, and it's become a dangerous situation. And, and I'm sure all over town. So Mary, we have a new policy for that. We use the, well, not new, but we use the uh, service repair link. Mm -hmm. And I spoke with our public works department and the, um, uh, what is her name? Uh, over Dawn? Dawn. Dawn. I'm sorry, I didn't. Yeah. You don't. And Dawn, Dan, you and I talked about this. Dawn takes care of each complaint that comes in. I think. That's correct, but I think what Mary's saying is that that it's only when a complaint comes in, the, right. the borough was not surveyed, or the, excuse me, we have relied on the police department to survey the uh, lights that are out in the town. Not We've changed, at least since I've been here, it's been that the police have gone out. But now residents can submit. Oh, residents can too, but I think Mary's saying is that there are a lot of lights out. Residents are not even reporting it. out there we need specifically oh, doing yeah. this because it's a danger, yep. plus the fact we're paying an arm and a leg and so many lights are out. We're still well, paying for the lights. So let me ask you this also. I, I have no problem with the fact that we were doing it through DPW, now we ask police to do that. Um, what responsibility does JCPNL have in order to turn around and do their own? Uh, they have to be notified by poll number. <laughs> no, no, I understand how it's done. I understand the reporting. I Trust me, I've reported quite a few myself and our residents have also. But isn't there any um, responsibility from JCPNL to turn around and have to actually survey their own light? That this is something now that's um, become our responsibility to do, which is great, but shouldn't JCPNL also be going out and having somebody, one of their employees, look to see if their um, you know, poles and their lights are working? Um, I get it, it's better when the municipality notifies them, but can we turn around and get an assessment from JCPNL? We have a boatload of lights out. It's it's ridiculous. Some on Minisync that I report. But I think that it's such a massive issue right now that we're going to need to have JCPNL come in and kind of do their own surveying of their um, uh, of their lighting. I, I think at this time, um, the ask can be made of JCPNL, but it is probably better that we control our own destiny and getting. Uh, whichever department we see fit to make sure that they go out and report as many lights that are out. I don't think JCPNL has the manpower, even if we ask, yeah. to go out and do it. But I don't know how much manpower we have either. So I think the reason why Public Works and the police were talking to each other is that the police, the Public Works employees go home at 3 p.m. and police on different shifts yeah, it makes no sense. Our employees go home and go home when the lights are on. So, but police doesn't. But police don't. But we already went through how many police are on duty, and we're still trying to get them now to help Mr. Izzo and other residents to patrol the streets. So now I can see this being one of the reasons why it's not getting done. So let's do this. Number one. Um, I want specific social media going out and we can put an email blast, a borough blast together, turning around and let's do a separate um, request form just for lights for our residents, okay? And also let them know, I just learned, I didn't know that they're identical, there, there's numbers on each light. Oh, every poll, yeah, yeah. Oh, every, every single poll, poll. absolutely. On it. So I think that's the first thing we need to do. We gotta get uh, our social media uh, coordinator and people to turn around and put that out and we'll do a full blitz out to our residents and everything to say, report a light. Okay, that's number one. So we're doing our due diligence. 
PD is doing what they need to do. Obviously, our employees will do what they need to do. We can turn around and appoint whatever department you want, but only one of them is working at night. So it's going to fall on that department. Next, I want you to call JCPNL and tell them that we have a plethora, a, very, a, a large amount, and it's an unsafe circumstance. And I want to know what they're going to do and to assist us with trying to tackle the number of lights that are out. They have to have some responsibility to turning around and sending somebody out to just take a look around. I don't care. I'm not saying it has to be done in 24 hours, like I expect with the car at Mr. Izzo's house. I'm giving you 48 hours for that. But there should be some kind of a window. Give them two months to turn around or something reasonable to assess the number of lights that are out here and get them fixed. Let's do it. It's not a difficult ask. We pay them a lot of money. Done. So two things. Social media bliss. Get residents to help us report. Determine, again, the PD are going to have to start jumping up their game a little bit now on top of everything else we do. Let's tax them with one more thing. And let's make JCP and L turn around and do their job, too. They're there for lights. Make, give me light. Done. Next. I'm going to talk about lights again. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this was in our budget last year. It's, and it's practically every light now down by River Road beautiful lights they're almost all broken and it was in the budget do we did, would did we have a contract out for that because those are our lights sounds like someone it. has a contract out for the lights <laughs> yeah. not that <laughs> well yeah unfortunately a lot of them are shot out but I do not know I will have to speak with Danielle tomorrow I'm not sure all right um, I know it was in the capital budget last year anything else uh one more thing talking about money again and I'm I'm sorry we we voted to approve a contract last week for the police station, for the uh, cleaning of the police station. And I, I didn't get the opportunity to read the whole contract, so I asked Dan a few questions before I voted on it. And then I also asked him to give me a copy of the contract. And a lot of the questions I asked and the answers I got have nothing to do with this contract. Um, I, I asked if this was going to be a person who was going to be in the building eight hours a day, and I was told yes, that's not the case. This is going to be a, uh, a crew that's going to come in sometime after five and clean the building in a couple of hours and leave. So there won't be anybody there all day long. I also asked about background checks, and I was told that the police, because our employees must have background checks. This company, um, Dan said that the police department was going to do background checks, but if you read the contract, they use subcontractors. How are we going to do con background checks on subcontractors who are going to be in the building after all the brass is left for the day? That's, that seems to be a little bit of a problem, and a big problem in police headquarters, because nobody should be in there without a background check, you know, having access to all of the offices. Also, the contract doesn't mention at all the courts. It's got a lengthy uh, explaining what, you know, the kitchen, the bathrooms, and uh, you know offices, and but it doesn't mention anything about the courts. And I mean, maybe they're going to clean it, maybe they're not. It's not mentioned in the contract. Also, it doesn't mention any of the prisoner areas in this contract. So maybe they're going to do it, maybe they're not. Who is going to be on top of watching this? Is it going to be have to be up to our? public works supervisor, because he won't know exactly what they're supposed to do by this contract. And here's an even funnier thing. Our public works supervisor and our public works superintendent were never even talked to about this. They were never given a copy of the contract. They didn't know what the town was going to supply, what the company was going to supply. Uh, I happened to send it to both of them. So at least they have some idea of what's going on. But I. You know, I asked Mike if he reviewed this contract, and he said he never even saw it. Who reviewed this contract? Uh, the chief. The chief reviewed the contract, and he's the one that gave you that misinformation that you gave me? Let's go over point by point, and I'll respond to you. Okay. Oh. Uh, you told me that there would be somebody in the building basically the same hours, no, exactly the same hours that the retiring employee left. That was my understanding. Okay, well, it's not that at all. 
and you told me about the background checks, but this company uses subcontractors. It could be a different crew every single day. Who's going to monitor this? The, because all the brass is going to be gone when they're in the building cleaning. The chief felt comfortable with this idea. He knew about what you're saying. I guess he knew there were subcontractors. And he felt comfortable with that idea. Now, if, he, if you're saying he did not know about that, I will speak to him tomorrow about that. Well, I don't know if he... I have no idea whether he knows about it or not. I just read it in here, and you told me that Captain, uh, hmm? that Pat, I'm sorry, Pat was going to do the background checks. And it could be a different group of people every day. The, the, and they wouldn't even be in the building to know whether these were different people, okay. because they're going to be coming in for a couple of hours in the evening. Yeah, the command, the command staff sent me an email that they said they were vetting. They said they were vetting the employees, whoever the, whoever's going to be doing the work. They said that they were be doing that. I took them at their word. You're saying they're not doing that? Okay. I don't know the I answer. I don't know whether they're going to do it. That's what, they, that's what, they, that's what they said the to me. The contract says that they use subcontractors. I'm just reading the contract. That's what they're saying they're going to do. So I will take the questions that you have. I will talk to both the captain and the chief, and I'll get you answers by the end of the business day tomorrow. Okay. I appreciate that. Because it's, you know, a lot of money. And although I do realize that we could end this contract within 30 days, so if we're not happy, so we'll just have to see. No, another thing, too, I really have to say this. When this just, first came up on your agenda, Mr. Frankel, <clears throat> I, <clears throat> environmental clean, I thought maybe they were going to go in and fog the building. Because we all know how terrible that building is with spreading germs. And um, you said to me, no. You know, we were going to do this um, to replace the retiring uh, employee. And I asked you, were the workers okay with this? Were the unions okay with this? And you told me yes. And I said, oh, well, if they're okay with it, then I'm okay with it. They're not okay with this. They feel that they were never informed, that the union was not informed that they could make a decision. They said this, you would, they said that you said, this is going to happen. This is the way it is. Councilwoman, I spoke directly to the president of AFSCME. Okay. I was, talked to him in the presence of another employee here. He said that he had no issue directly to me and the other employee. Okay. Whatever you're hearing is rumor. No, whatever, no, 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 whatever, no, whatever, whatever, no, excuse me, let me finish, let me finish, please. It's not a rumor. Let me finish, please. Mm -hmm. If they're upset, Okay, let them talk to the president of their union. The president of the union gave me the green light to do this. Okay, I spoke to them. You. That's what the president of the union did in front of another employee. So they have a problem with their president. And you, the supervisor also said that he said you had to clear it with the union or he, he wasn't happy. And, and to your other representation that the superintendent mm -hmm. did not know about this is also false. Okay, because the superintendent did know about this, who handles buildings and grounds. After this happened. Oh, he knew about this, Mary. No, he didn't. He was Mary, trying to Mary, set up an appointment Mary, with, the, with the captain. Mary, I think Damn. if you, I, excuse me, if you speak to him, ask I him. I spoke to him. Good. I spoke to him today. Good. I spoke to him three days ago. Good. This sounds like another situation where you need to put people in a room because there's obviously somebody's talking to Councilman Novak and our business administrator is turning around and meeting with the union president. So somebody here, it doesn't take a rocket scientist, somebody here is not, somebody within this chain is not being truthful. Okay, so Mr. Frankel, you met with Mark Hurley, or who? Yes. And that's the president of the, the union. You're saying that they were aware of it, they were okay with it, he was okay with it, he's their elected official. Mary, are you talking to Mark Hurley? Yes. Okay, so Mark Hurley is telling you otherwise. Mark Hurley said he was never asked, he was told it was going to happen. Okay, so I mean, clearly we need to turn around and get a bunch of people in the room because I look for common denominators, and I see common denominator here, so I truly hope that our, we're not getting double talk because 
if he's meeting with Dan saying one thing and he's meeting with you and saying another thing, something's not working. So I say, you better get yourselves in a room together and you better turn around and have a conversation because I'm not going to have this play out on the dais like this. I also think you need to bring the chief into this conversation because obviously it was a recommendation from the police chief and obviously there are some misunderstandings. You're taking a look at the, at the agreement and the contract. I think a lot of your questions need to go directly also to the chief because he's involved in this process as well. I know that when it comes to police matters, we always take into account what the police chief has to say in that recommendation. And I think that's where you need to start. Listen, um, this is about communication. And it's always disheartening to turn around. And I'm certain that the public isn't happy to turn around and see when it doesn't look like adults can't communicate. So uh, communication better get fixed. Conversations better need to happen. And I'm tired of having council meetings that look like a big giant I got you to one person or the other because it makes us look dysfunctional. So the adults in the room better get their communication in check, talk to one another so we don't have to turn around and look like we don't know what we're doing up here. All right, that is another directive. Dan, I want a meeting set up with you, Councilwoman Novak, with the chief, and bring in the union president and get this under control because at the end of the day, we need a clean building, we need a safe building, and we need a building that's vetted with people that should be in the building with or without brass. I'm not having this anymore. I feel like I'm at home dealing with children. I agree with you. And I want it fixed. And I want it fixed now. I agree with you. When I ask a question, I expect to get a truthful answer. Yes, and, and clearly getting... you're not getting answers from somebody, and I'm very concerned oh, excuse me. about... Excuse me, Miss Kilpatrick. I asked questions specifically of Dan and got the wrong answer. Listen, I'm not going to turn around and continue having an argument up here. The individuals that are mentioned are the ones that are closest to this issue. And that's who needs to go into a room. And I expect that this will be sit this situation will be taken care of. The next time we have a discussion, it will actually be a discussion about governance and whether or not to move forward with the contract that we approved already. Okay? Because I'm certain that nobody up here on the council is comfortable with hearing this bickering back and forth. Nothing's going to get accomplished right now until those individuals meet. Anything else, Councilwoman uh, Novak? I'd just like to reiterate, regardless of what happened with Hurley or or Phil, I asked Mr. Frankel specific questions about the contract, and he didn't know the answers. And instead of saying, I didn't read the contract, or I don't know, he told me non-truths. I'm and not going to turn around and, and say him. whether it's non-truths or not, because I don't know what the hell is truth and what isn't right. truth right now. So get it figured out, and then we can turn around and have the discussion. But I'm not going to turn around and say, this person's a liar in the nicest possible way, or that person's a liar. I don't think anybody knows here who's telling the truth and who's not. Um, this is just dysfunction at its finest, and it's embarrassing. I agree with you. Moving on. Anything else? Progress. Progress. Wonderful. I'm going to keep this very, very brief. Charity Bowl is a major, major uh, uh, exciting time. So this is for our BIC. Um, and I will be there like I am every year, and I'm looking forward to that. Excellent job by the HRC. Um, once again, this is our second virtual session now that we've been able to do. Um, I apologize that my audio, uh, listen, optimum again, strikes in my house. That's weird hours. But I was able to turn around and listen to that. I'm just so very grateful that you guys um, were able to make that a success. Last but not least, and this is a little personal for me, but I'm looking at the clock, and I would just hope that my daughter is still awake because it is her birthday today. Aww. And as much as I love spending time with all of you, Haley, happy 15th birthday. I love you, honey. Mommy's coming home soon. Happy and <laughs> so that is it. Progress on that. Mr. Frankel, Authorization, do your report. Authorization to apply for the New Jersey DEP Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative Grant for an electric shuttle bus charger and charging infrastructure. Keep request, rolling until someone stops you. Request received for a handicapped parking sign from Amelia Gerges for 39 Canal Street. Authorization to promote Richard Poplowski to equipment operator in the Department of Public Works, effective March 1st, 2022. Freeze for one second, Councilman Novak. What was, your question was on the previous. <clears throat> Did that go through traffic? The handicapped parking? Did that? We're going to refer it. Okay. Okay. That's all I Good question. Okay, next. Authorization, authorization to extend the contract for landscaping to Greenleaf for a final one-year term. Uh, any objections on any of those? Great. Uh, nothing under rec, water, and sewer. Miss Bianca Mano, it's your turn. What I am, Madam Mayor, I just have a budget transfer resolution. Thank you. 
Very good. Uh, progress other than that, correct? <laughs> All right, borough engineer, Mr. Cornell. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. One item, the Ernst & Road project, which was funded by a DOT grant, is complete. We're recommending a resolution closing out the contract, and we have a $25,000 approximately net reduction on the change order. All right. That's all I have. Thank always you. Always happy. You always know. I love that you're like my final like report of the <laughs> Mr. DuPont, you are my final oh, official. I got, I, got no. No report. I got no report. I always get hot when I look at that executive session. I'm like, wait I a minute. No we got no <laughs> Thank you, Mr. DuPont. Um, public portion? Anybody? All right. Oh, I do have a hand up. Jim, Ro uh, let's see. Jim Robinson, because you're in the bed. Keep moving up. Keep moving up. Go ahead, Jim. Okay. Thank you, Mary. Jim Robinson, 11 Brawl Square. I very much appreciated the comment on the uh, a custodial contract for the public safety uh, building. As you know, I brought that up a couple meetings ago and was um my comments were dismissed i was told they didn't hold any water when that happens i have to go do my own research and and, and uh see what happens i do want to congratulate the borough for the uh, applying for the grant for the electric shuttle i think that's uh, um a great thing i mentioned before that we have no public charging stations in town i think we should i think you should look into that um on the uh ernst and road bond or the close out of the contract on Ernst and Road. Mr. Cornell, did you did you look at the sidewalks there as well? Because a resident of my neighborhood sent me some pictures the other day of the sidewalks that were crumbling there. Mr. Robinson, this uh, section of Ernst and Road is between the Garden State Parkway Bridge and Route 35, so it's not. Oh, okay. In the neighborhood. Okay, I, I thought that was North Ernst and. And the fourth question, it's not really my concern, but people have. And about half a dozen people have asked me this. I don't know why. And, and it has to do with the contract of trucks at Bailey Park. I think I know what they're there for, but I'm not going to assume. Can somebody tell us what they're there for, how, what the time frame is, what we're getting, and uh, who approved it? Yes. Um, so, uh, either, uh, Dan, you want to cover that one? It's the trucks that are utilized in the back end of Bailey Park. I know that was for work, uh, work that was being done. Do you know how uh, how long they continue to stay there? I don't remember. That was a while ago. I think that w wasn't it a while ago that we discussed that. Yeah. I think there was work that was done that was part of even the um, infrastructure off of um, off of Washington. Yes. Um, it's one the county was doing. But apparently, there's still trucks. There. There's what are they still, there's those trucks and there's still a pile. I think there's also a pile there. Um, yeah, Jay, right? hold on. Go on, Jay. <laughs> As far as who approved it, I'm not sure. I think it was public service for their gas modernization project. That's I think what I they were kind of using it as a staging area. Correct. Are we charging them anything? And what, what are they paying? I don't have any specifics about what or why. I just think that's who it is. The company, I think, was Hankel's McCoy. Right, and I've noticed yeah. that they've fenced off areas back there, too, and I forgot to put that up. Bring hey, it up. Yeah, it's you know what? This might, be so, this might be, I, I, I do recall briefly, them asking when they were doing that infrastructure work, when they were doing that um, uh, line reworking and stuff, and I think we said that we would allow them to use that area as a staging space for a little bit, but I, this could be a situation where they've overstayed their welcome and taken some liberties, and we need to uh, definitely question, monitor, and find out if it's time to kick that out, because um, I feel like there's more trucks there than I've ever seen lately, and... You know, let, let's get a handle on who's there, why they're there, and how long they they think that they're going to stay. Because if not, we gotta we've gotta do our due diligence for the residents, and um, you know maybe there's some monetary costs here that we need to throw on there if we're amenable to them staying in that area. So that's a good question, uh, Jim. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, next. Hello. Uh, good evening. I'm Charlie, Name and address. <laughs> Charlie Cradiville from New Brunswick. I'm the editor of New Brunswick Today community newspaper, available online at newbrunswicktoday.com. Uh, it's good to see some familiar faces here. And uh, uh, wanted to start by uh, thanking you, Madam Mayor, for your leadership and the way you run these meetings. It's refreshing to see, and I really do uh, appreciate it. As you know, I was at the last one, and I said that to you personally. I want to say that on the record here for thank everybody you. to hear. Um, uh, I am here uh, uh, to ask a couple questions, maybe some follow-ups. Uh, um, 
working on a, a story. I did file an OPA request five days ago. I just want to confirm that that's been received. Can the I can ask Jessica. Jessica, did you receive? Yes, it's been received. It's been received in process. In process, in process. Thank, thank you very much. And then uh, I did want to ask if anybody can tell me anything about the theft from the municipal court, how much has been taken, and uh, I'm going to turn that over to Mr. Yeah, you know what? Uh, that is, uh, I, I can't comment on that. That I'm sure, uh, certainly, they're subject to investigation at this point in time. So we have no comment on that. Okay. Well, I am working on a story about it, and I am investigating it myself. I am aware that there's been a criminal charge filed against an employee of the court, and I'm trying to find out, you know, since the taxpayers are the victim, how much uh, was was uh, you know taken or stolen or missing. Um, I, I guess I'm not going to be able to get that answer tonight. Okay. <laughs> okay. There you go. Sorry. You know, you're not getting anything more than that. <laughs> attorney is the attorney. So, um, well, anything else? Th that is all for tonight, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, anybody else from the public? All right, ladies and gentlemen, I see none online either. So I will entertain a motion to close the public portion. Motion. motion. All in favor? Aye. Uh, no, was there? There was um, June 4th. Yes. And I'm sorry, just for the record to help Jessica out here. So we had a motion to close the public was by Donna, uh, uh, Councilman Roberts and seconded by uh, Councilman June 4th. And then our motion for adjournment was uh, also Councilman Roberts and seconded by Christian. Second. There you go, uh, Councilman Anoha. Ladies and gentlemen. Have a wonderful evening. Stay safe. And I'm going to uh, sing some happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> Your name is Haley? Yeah, it's today. Happy birthday, Haley. Happy 15th. Yeah, thank you. I told her to listen. Happy King Senior. On her birthday? Hold on. Afternoon, I thought. <laughs> we'll be partying. We'll be partying. Yeah, we'll be partying.